Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 100. 100. In a way, I feel like this entire show has kind of led up uh, to this episode. Um, it's a... Uh, you know, first and foremost, I just want to thank you guys uh, for anyone that's listened to any show. Um, I really, really appreciate it. This has been a, a a labor of love, something I am super, super passionate about. Uh, it's something I started, you know, four years ago. Um, just, it was something I wanted to do. I love people. I love getting to know people. Um, I've made some of the best friends I have through this show. Um, and it's just been great um, the fact that anyone even listens, it, it really, it really means a lot. So at the top of the show, thank you so much, uh, for the continued su- support, for being interested at all, um, to every person who's been on the show. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, this episode is, uh, is Norman Bell, who is my dad. So this is a, this is a pretty big one. It's, I grew up listening to my dad, uh, tell stories about his amazing life and all the crazy things that he's done. And it was very much because of him why I started this show. Um, I love hearing people's stories. I love getting to know people. My dad is very much uh, a people person. And we, you guys are going to get to hear some of the stories I grew up on. Uh, we talk about how he grew up before electricity, really. Um, <laughs> then we talked about moving from way out in the farmland where there was no electricity into the city for the first time. Uh, we talk about having his own zoo, essentially. He uh, he raised uh, exotic animals for a little while before moving to Arizona, where he picked up mining. Uh, he became a hotshot. Um, for anyone that's seen Only the Brave, the movie, a hotshot, uh, the firemen who engage wildfires and whatnot. And then we talk about how he always wanted to sail the Pacific, so one day he just uh, saved up, bought a sailboat, taught himself how to sail, and uh, he did it. He sailed the South Pacific. Um he, he's been a great example of somebody who dreams something and then makes it happen. Uh, and it's been pretty inspiring. We talk about how he raised bears. Um, the farm that I've mentioned time and time again that I used to live on before we moved down to, uh, to Florida, uh, we talk about that, how that came to be, the different animals that we've had. And uh, we also talk about the a few things that he's learned uh, along the way. It's, uh, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It's my dad. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this episode. It's really personal. Um, it means a lot uh, that he came on. It took a little, took a little convincing. Not gonna lie, the most interesting person in the world uh, thought he wasn't interesting. So uh, let's just do this uh, again, guys. Thank you, thank you for for checking it out. So let's just jump into this. Uh, please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number one hundred, with my dad. Theme song time. need these anyway you could just have them have you ever been on a radio show before nope really <laughs> in all your years you've never been on the radio nope you've been on tv a couple times maybe yeah. just yeah. pictures at all oh really yeah you know what i always think of my first time on tv was uh remember when they had that like sniper incident yeah. and <laughs> i remember <laughs> i remember it because justin perry Remember my friend from middle school? Uh, His mom was like, I saw you on the news this morning because it was like me and Greg at like 12 and 10 being like, you know, here's the situation. There's something going on across the street. And they're like, what was happening? Mm. Just kids explaining something that wasn't very good. (laughs) (laughs) I think that was my first time on TV, though. Not bad. I'd just been, when I played Santa Claus, you know. Oh, yeah, good point. I didn't get interviewed or anything, but I mean, I was. You were just there? Okay, well, that's better than be on TV for something bad, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that's good. I mean, Santa on probably on the Harley or just in general. What when I was on TV? Yeah. No, I was on a, like a um, made-up thing with chairs and you know the kids all around. Oh, the whole deal. Yeah. How long have you been Santa? 
Do you remember the first time you did it? Did you have a white beard when you did it? No, I used to dye it when I was younger. Really? Yeah. Okay. But okay. I've been doing it for, I don't know, probably 40 years at least. It's a long time. Yeah. It's a long time. Well, You'd when you have kids, you know, you, you oh, yeah. look like him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You don't really get to choose it when you have that kind of beard. Yeah. And the robust figure. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So I always start with asking people where they're from. But I, you're my dad, so I know, <laughs> I know everything already. You're I'm fr- from my mother. You you're know. from your mother. That's good. That's a good start. <laughs> I think this would be a very different conversation if you were. <laughs> so Rochester, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. I was born in Rochester. You were born in Rochester. Yeah. That's not where you lived? Uh, no. Did they have a name I for it? I lived at one time, but... Did they have a name for it? Oh, it was Because way back then, you know, it's, it's just land before man yeah, had kind of settled. Yeah, tick places, you know. <laughs> sure. Those, there were no other people there. Yeah, it was Crown Point. And yeah. Places like that. Shrewd yeah. And <laughs> Tall trees. <laughs> Lots of trees. <laughs> yeah, you just, just name it after what you see. Big no rock. No power, no nothing, you know, just trees. Sure. <laughs> Did you not have power? No. Well, how old were you when you got power? Well, it depends on where we were at. Now, when we had to move into the city, we had power. But mm-hmm. when we lived out in the country up at camp, we were, I was about 10 before we actually got power up there. Did you live at camp? For part, part time, yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. So we used to have the ice house and all that stuff, you know. Uh huh. Huh. So I didn't realize that. I think I always thought of camp as like the way that we see camp. Like mm-hmm. you go there for the summers. But oh, yeah, now. But, you know, in the. When it was small, we used to cut the ice, cut cut ice out of the lake and store it all. Yeah? Put sawdust on it and roll it up in big blocks. And that way we had we had ice all, all summer long, so that what few neighbors we had, you know. Sure. What did you cut it with? Oh, you start a hole and had, had like almost like a, uh, a big tree saw type that oh. just went in. And it was pretty easy cutting. It was, you know, you cut straight. It was easy to cut because... The blade was probably about no, probably eight inches. Wow, real thin, but you know, sure, like that. So it cut straight. Huh. We just cut like wait until the ice got about two foot thick, and then we cut cut it uh, two foot wide and it's about six feet long. That sounds really heavy. And, and then we drag it in the ice house and put sawdust on it, and we drag the next one in, roll it up onto that one, put sawdust, and does the sawdust keep it from melting? Yeah, and also from sticking together. Oh. And that way there, when we when we took the ice pick, you could pick out, you know, just take a piece, whatever, how many inches you wanted, you know. It's crazy that that's in, like, you're talking about America, not like Scandinavia. Yeah, I used to sell it for, ice used to go for about seven and a half cents a pound back then. Wow. Six feet long, that's a lot of pounds. <laughs> <laughs> how did you drag it? Oh, it was easy dragging. You're on ice and snow. It's not. Yeah, I mean, you had to have gloves on or something, right? Well, no, I had a nice ice... You had a ice tongs. As a matter of fact, they still got a pair at the house. Oh, They're ice tongs. Yeah, what? They, what is that? They look like a scissors pair of things with with uh, ninety degree hooks on them. That really hook it into the ice and just grab one side, and as you pull, it tightens up on it. Wow, that explains why you're superhuman strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's from lugging all that water when I was a That's kid. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> ice water, just lifting heavy things. Yeah, well, we. Had we had a, a water pump was outside. We didn't have one in the house. And sure. So, so we had to lug water all the time. Wow. And then we had to lug water when my mother washed the clothes to her wash tub. <laughs> it's a lot of lugging stuff. <laughs> you get pretty strong pretty fast. Uh, so how I, I always, I've told you before that I see you as like the little kid in Old Yeller. <laughs> I figure, I think that's how you were as a kid. That's how I picture you like. You pull frogs out of your pockets that are just there? Well, just about. Yeah. We, my brother and I would catch frogs and turtles all all summer long. And every every week, my mother, the wash tub that we had was like just two sides. It was like two tubs together mm-hmm. and with a washboard in there. And so in the summertime, my brother and I would catch frogs on one side and turtles on the other. And oh. every Saturday when my mother did the wash, we had to turn them all loose. Oh, <laughs> you just collected them? <laughs> yeah. And then catch, catch them again the next week. That's funny. What was the first pet you ever had? A dog. You're a dog? 
Really? My okay. father got that for me when I was born. Do you remember what kind of dog it was? Well, it was a mutt. Okay. Named it was Skippy. just a dog? Yeah, named Skippy. It was uh, black and white, all black and white. Oh, that's pretty cool. A neat dog. Not bad. Not bad. I'm surprised yeah. that it wasn't something crazier. Yeah, no. You started you started off regular. <laughs> oh, yeah. Started off pretty normal. Yeah? What, were, were, were animals something that you always like kind of gravitated towards? Because I know you as like, you know, oh, the yeah. farm and everything. Yeah. You've yeah. always had like a penchant for them. Yeah. I've always, always liked animals. Yeah. Still do. We still yeah. have three <laughs> dogs at home. Yeah, that's true. Three dogs and a prairie dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. I always forget as well because you're one of three. We get multiple siblings. Yeah. And like, did Aunt Phyllis have to carry stuff too? Oh, yeah. But <laughs> okay. I was the uh, middle middle one and I was the, of course, The first boy. boy. Yeah. My, my brother's a little younger, so. So you had to do a lot of the logging for a yeah. while. What's heavier, ice or water? <laughs> <laughs> well, it all depends on what day it is. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what number bucket it is. <laughs> yeah. Ice tongs. I've never even heard of that. I got a pair at the house. Okay? Yeah? I'm surprised you have never showed them to you. It's, it sounds like, you know, when you see people do, like, welding, the, like, big things they have for the yeah. cups, you know, yeah. to pour the liquid metal and stuff? Yeah. Is it like that? No, no. Oh. It's more like a pair of scissors. Oh, okay. But at the end, instead of being just... pointed, they got a 90-degree turn in, in the end of them, and it's pointed oh. in it. Huh. And when you clamp the two together, it goes into, squeeze them together, it goes into the ice. And sure. And you just got to hang on to one side, and it, it tightens right up on it and keeps it. Huh. And did you, you said you stacked them on top of each other? Oh, so yeah. you just had to, just that's roll, got, that's got to get up. heavy. Uh, how high did you stack them? Depends on how much ice yeah. you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Most of the time we got stacked them up. It was they were about like oh, about six foot, you know, because it, wow. it was three three row, you know, three three rows. Sure. And the ice we always waited until it was about two foot thick. Have you ever fallen through the ice? No. Well, I can't say that. Uh oh. <laughs> well, this was not up at the camp, but uh, I was ice skating one time time over at my cousin's house, and they had a little duck pond and a little creek going through it. Oh no. Fell through that up to my knees. That was the deepest okay. water was. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that could have been much worse. But we were ice skating out on it a little early. Sure, sure. Ugh. Good thing it was only knee deep. That's good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Sheesh. So you sold it. That's that's a good thing to do. Sell ice. That's smart. Well, we sold it. Yeah, it was, you know, we. it wasn't like a big business. It was sure. just, just the neighbors and... You know, back then there was wasn't very many neighbors around. And sure. But uh, there was a few. That kind of reminds me of the potato things that we got from the yard, and you would pay us for those. Oh yeah. And then we got in trouble because you found us out. <laughs> <laughs> I still think about this whenever I see those. Oh yeah. Because the potato things, you know, you paid us like the uh, potato it's like vine is from. Uh, yeah. It's a potato vine. Yeah, it's a potato vine. They have these little things, and then they grow into weeds. Is it a weed? What is it? It's a weed. It's yeah, a weed, it's yeah. It's a big vine. It kills everything. It yeah. It smothers everything. So I remember you paid us like a nickel for each one. Yeah. So we were like, all right, cool. And then we cleaned up the entire yard, and we're like, well, they're all the way down the street. <laughs> 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 so we started taking them from other yards, and you caught on pretty quick. <laughs> and then you stopped paying us for them. So, you know, we, we have the entrepreneurial <laughs> side to us for a little while. What did your parents do? Well, my, f well, my father had we had a garage at one time. We did some did some farming and really. Then he had and when we moved into Salmonville, we had a, a garage. He had a Snoko gas station, and my mother had a chuck wagon, and my grandmother had a little knickknack shop. It was on the main route going to the Mount Washington at that time. Really? Yeah. I just realized I know nothing about your parents. Yeah. Uh, at all. That's pretty interesting. So you've always kind of gone by. I mean, that makes sense, knowing all the things that you've done as well. You've had kind of like knick-knack shops as well. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you've had a chuck wagon. Is that is that meat? Is chuck wagon, is that a meat? Well, no, just a little place to eat, like a diner. Oh, chuck yeah. wagon? That's what it's well, called? That's what, what we called it. A I chuck wagon. That yeah? That was the name of it. Oh, that was the name of it. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty it cool. It was like a little diner. We didn't. It was not anything inside. It was all outside, like a... 
you know, oh. drive in ice cream parlor type thing, you know. Sure. And it was all outside. Well, that's pretty like, cool. Like a food truck almost now. It, sure. Yeah, yeah. Similar to that. Huh. Did you ever work there? No, I was only a little kid. Well, I don't know. I, I, figured, to, I figured I you're at like three years old, like coming back from the factory. I used to <laughs> fill the uh, oil jugs for my dad. They see that counts. Because <laughs> back then, you know, we got oil in a 55 gallon drum. Okay. And then we had these quart glass glass uh, quart bottles with a little screw on funnel like onto them. Really? And then it, you, it was like you fill up six of them. And they were like a milk cart milk carrier that they used to deliver milk in. And huh. it was out there, and, and, you know, when they, when someone needed oil, you put the oil in, you brought the empty one in, filled it back up, and put it back out there. Weird. I used to do that. That was about the only thing I could. I was pretty small then. Sure. So when did you move into the city then? Uh, shortly after my, my father died. Yeah? Yeah. So you were in the country up until then? Yeah. And, like, country, like no power. Pretty much. No running water. Well, w- until we moved. We moved into the farm. We had a, a big farmhouse with a gas station and all that. Oh. Did you move a lot? Huh? Did you yeah. move a lot? Yeah. Really? How come? Just because? Um, well, we started off, we'd, we'd, we moved to better for better ourselves. But sure. Then after my father died, we moved from city to quite a few cities that we lived in. My mother moved a lot, quite a bit. Sure. Depending on where she had to work. Was that weird? Mm-hmm. Moving to a city for the first time? Oh, man, it was terrible. Really? <laughs> Talk about a falling off the turnip truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of the first days of school, there was a kid g- gave me the finger, and I thought he was saying hi to really? me. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I said hi back. <laughs> I didn't know what it was anything about. <laughs> when I went to school, the, there was never a teacher on the ground. grounds. They only had six grades of school. Oh. And the older kids were in charge of taking care of the little kids. And, I mean, that was the way it was. It was no no bullying or any of that stuff back then. You know? Sure. The older kids looked out for the little kids, and that was it, you know. And then I went to the city. Man, it was totally different. Gee. <laughs> they used to bully me all the time until one time, this was in Dover, when I was first first week of that school there, I used to go to the fence where there was a uh, river down below. Mm-hmm. I used to watch that because I love the water. And the local bully come up behind me and punched, t- tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and he punched me right in the face. What in the world? I didn't know how to fight or anything. I grabbed him by the crotch and the neck of the <laughs> door, picked him right up over my head and threw him. <laughs> It's all the ice. <laughs> you would not believe all the friends I had after really? that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. It's just one. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, but I mean, I didn't know nothing about it. I, sure. I just picked him up and threw him. He landed on the pavement and he didn't bother me no more. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. See, all that ice and water lugging <laughs> makes sense. But I didn't know how to fight or do anything. I never even saw a fight, you know? Right, yeah, because different world. Yeah. Kids are pretty awful. <laughs> oh, they, they've gotten bad, I guess. You know, bullying, it's ridiculous. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. You know. Do you yeah. remember the first time you turned a light switch on? <laughs> 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 well, I can't remember that, but I can remember we used to like go to my grandmother's because it was in the town. She had one of the uh, rotary phones. Oh, right. And, you know, to talk on that. But you had when you got the operator... You know, you were on a party line, make sure you no one else is already talking on it. Oh. And then you got an operator, and you gave her the number, and she'd plug you in. Oh, <laughs> weird. Because <laughs> up until then, you just had a telegraph or a horseman. <laughs> <laughs> there was no power, no lines whatsoever. Nothing. You smoke signals. <laughs> so did you keep warm with fire? Had to have, right, in the winter? Oh, yeah. New Hampshire's cold. Oh, yeah. It's really cold. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. We cut wood, cut wood all summer long, too, and sure. stacked it, and... And things like that. Man. So you actually kind of lived in sort of a pioneer yeah, life in the beginning. Sort of, yeah. When you think about it. Yeah. But even, you know, even after we moved into the summer, we st- in, into the city, summers we still spent up there at the camp, you know. And, mm-hmm. You know, it, it was where we grew up, and it was my happy place. Still is. I go there every year. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's, um, you know, it's changed a lot, but it's still still my happy place. Still camp. Know, I love camp. 
It's pretty awesome. I wish it wasn't so cold. I'd live there. <laughs> tell me about it. I tell people that all the time. New Hampshire might be the most beautiful state, but you, man, you got to earn it. That winter is just yeah. brutal. I tell people New Hampshire is a nice place to be from. Yeah. A long <laughs> yeah. way from in the wintertime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so, I, I couldn't handle it. I know. I barely handled winters in North Carolina. Yeah. I, I, I didn't mind cold back then, you know. We did a lot of ice fishing and skating and stuff like that. Sure. And then as a later on in life when snowmobiles were invented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right after you discovered electricity. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, you know, we did a lot of that. And sure. Tried skiing a couple of times, but didn't do too well. But <clears throat> Right, right. But I had fun, you know. Was it weird to, like, assimilate once you get to a place that has, like, electricity and, you know, new things? Was well, there a you learning know, curve? You, you, you know, pretty you talk adaptable. about something like that, but, you know, you talk about when I turned on the light switch. Yep. When I lived on my boat for so long without having, you know, basically power, we got up when the sun come up and went to bed when the sun went down. Sure. Well, after living on my boat and doing the sailing, I'd come back and, you know, moved into my first house after moving from my boat. It was really weird to go to the wall and stick... Flick it oh, get, good point. Get, get it out and go take a shower with nice hot water. You sure. Know, and, and uh, you know, just things like that. You you just don't realize it. You know. Sure. Sure. Did, did what did Aunt Phyllis think? Do you know? Because Aunt Phyllis was older than you. Yeah. So I always think about like me and Greg are so close in age, but have very different experiences to the same thing. So do you know how she handled it? Well, it was a, uh, somewhat different for her because she was a little older. And when she got to a certain grade school, we had to move into. That's the main reason why we moved to the city because we only had six grades, and you, if you wanted to go beyond that, you had to. Uh, the town paid for the uh, the schooling, but you had to supply your own transportation. Well, it was uh, thirty some miles. Jeez. So that's when we moved into the city. Really. So, my so it's for school. So my sister could huh. go to school there. Well, that worked out. There you go. Is that where she met Uncle Eddie? Well, uh, uh, this is I uh, met Eddie a long time after that. I mean, we were living in the city, but mm -hmm. she had gotten out of high school by then. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I think I was thinking of, because I know Aunt Charlotte and Uncle Billy, they met when Aunt Charlotte was like 16 or something yeah, like that, like she pretty was, young. She was out of high school, and Eddie, of course, was in the military. Right. And they met him at a, at a pizza place. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Not just a... Next block down from where we lived at the time. Sure, sure. Well, that's good. But you seem like you didn't get into a whole lot of trouble in school. That's mm, all right. <laughs> no, not not too much trouble in school. And, but Outside of school? Well. <laughs> a little different? Well, I bought my first car when I was 13 years old. Oh, well, okay, that'll do it. And I started driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How'd you reach the pedals? Oh, I was I could make it as a forty nine Ford. Forty nine Ford. Yeah. That was your first car? Yep. I was a ninety two Taurus. I don't wanna I don't wanna <laughs> upsell you here, but <laughs> I paid thirty five dollars for it. Uh, yeah. I had to paper root and mowed grass and that's how Really? It was. Yeah. So you did papers that was that your first job? What was yeah. your what was your first like job job? Was it doing papers? Probably yeah, it would yeah. Be, uh, and a forty nine Ford? <laughs> well we, we didn't it was door to door and we walked. Oh. That's we not fun. Didn't, didn't have to use the car for that. Sure, that's good. We just they dropped them off at the gas station not too far from the house, and there'd be about six of us down there getting our papers, and we each had our own route. My brother had a route, I had a route. Oh, nice. Some friends of ours had a route. We did a little, did the papers and mowed grass and stuff in the summertime, shoveled snow in the winter. There you papers, go. You know, but I paid thirty five dollars for it and drove it home. <laughs> That's how much a tank of gas is now. <laughs> you bought a car. Yeah. That's pretty good. And then I, uh, to get my car insurance, I, I picked apples at Vickery Apple Orchard. He had really? state farm insurance, and I, I insured the car. Did you ever get caught eating one? Eating an apple? Yeah, I always oh, think I'm about sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always think about that if any sort of, like, I think there was an I Love Lucy episode where she's working at, like, the chocolate factory. She's got to wrap them, and then she'll just, like, eat a few. Yeah. I don't know well, how you they're at the orchard. You don't need too many apples, I'll tell you. Sure. <laughs> they wouldn't. They don't miss one or two. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, true, true. Thirty-five dollars for a car—that's crazy. Yeah. 
And at 13, that's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> I just ima- so could you see over the dash <laughs> at oh, 13? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like because cars now you see like kids driving them. Maybe cars are just built different now mm. to where they're shaped different. Well, you had a big, big almost like a bench seat, and it you know it. Was, oh sure. It, it wasn't something you laid back. It wasn't like a oh, chair. Oh sure. <laughs> or anything. Not, there was zero luxury to it. <laughs> but. No, I mean, you know, I was 13. I was a pretty good-sized boy then. Oh, know. sure. Okay, okay. What happened to it? <laughs> when I went in the service, I sold it. Oh, okay. That's a good I, reason. I kept it until I went in the service. Sure. I put a lot of miles on that little six-cylinder flathead engine. <laughs> yeah? Is that where you learned to work on cars, too? On yep. that one? Yep. That's when I started. I, I'd tear that engine apart and put it back together and polish everything and... Yeah, it's just like your little project thing. What was neat was you could stand inside the engine compartment, put your feet on the on the ground on both sides of that engine. Oh, you can't do none of that now. No, you can't, you can't even get your arm down. No, there. you <laughs> can't. <laughs> That's interesting. But it was a six cylinder straight, you know, and um, you, it was all kinds of room in there. You could actually put stand inside the engine compartment with your feet on the ground on both sides. Well, there you go. And it still worked when you sold it? That's important. <laughs> yeah, it was still running. Body was all rusted up. And about half. I sold the guy used it in a uh, demolition derby. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. It was sort of sad to see it go that way. But sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the body would, you know, it wouldn't pass inspection no more. Sure, sure. And it was pretty bad. So what was it like the first time you got pulled over as a 13-year-old? <laughs> I was about 14 first. Okay, so you got a full year in yeah, before the law yeah. knew you. <laughs> but I don't know. It got to the point where at one time uh, the, the local cops didn't bother me. Most of all, a new rookie would, but, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't bother me too much. And uh, went in front of the judge a few times. He knew me by first name <laughs> basis. But <laughs> he was a local, you know. So, sure. Yeah. We gave my mother poor mother gray hairs. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why uh, just as soon as I turned 17, I uh, I was in the service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was either there or <laughs> reform school or jail or some damn Oh, yeah. Okay. That's fair. So, that's my fair. My mother signed and the judge signed and away I went. Sure. I sure. turned 17 in December. In January, I was in Great Lakes boot camp. Oh, well. <laughs> Talk about cold. I was about to say, good <laughs> Lord. Great Lakes, Michigan? Yeah. Oh. Illinois. Oh, Illinois. That's yeah, good. Still. Illinois. Gee, that's even more inland. Yeah. That's cold. It, Just outside of Chicago. Oh, man. Great Lakes Training Center. So you did that. You get out of the military. Is yeah. that when you bought the boat? No. No. What did you do after that? I like when you started, got out? I got out and started farming. I oh, back really? Back in New Hampshire and had the, had the farm. Started... Started up a dairy farm, actually. Really? Yeah. I was just getting so the co- some of the cows were coming in, and um, I got tired of it. Yeah. S- so, that, well, in the meantime, I'd collected a lot of wild animals, and then I managed a, an animal park for, for one season, and that's when my mother died, and then when she died, I moved to Arizona. Really? Yeah. So you got out. Collected wild, like what, why, <laughs> why a dairy farm, and what, what wild animals did you collect coming out? Well, you just like dairy, needed something dairy to do. Farm was uh, kind of small. I never really got it big. Sure. I had, uh, I got it up to five milkers. That was it. And okay. That's when I had enough of it. Is that a lot of work? Yeah. I feel like it'd be a ton of work. Yeah, because I was working at the university at the time too. So, you know, you. And you in New Hampshire? Yeah. What were you doing there? I I was working on a chicken farm. Really. <laughs> They had a chicken farm at the university? Yeah. What were you doing there? Well, they were doing all kinds of things on feed, checking which kind of feed chickens would produce the best, grow the best, and different things like that. They did oh. try different lights and things like that. Nothing really weird, just mo- mostly different kinds of feed to see how s- soon they could be, either f- if they were going to be for, like, eating chickens or laying chickens or whatever, you know. And sure. And you yeah. took care of the chickens. Yeah. Huh. All right. And then you're like, how about we get some cows up in here? <laughs> and then you did the dairy farm? No, no. I, I, I originally wanted to do the dairy farm. That's what I started oh. first. But then that's when I got into the other. 
the chickens. Got into the because I had to work. Right. Okay. So it was like you're coming out, just got to find a way to make some living. And yeah, you you hate making a living on five cows. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. But I mean, even I, you know, it took me, you know, I, I when I got out, what when I first got the land, I took and bought um, just young young uh, new newborn heifers. Oh. So you know, they have a couple of years before they were even old enough to breed. You know, mm-hmm. and then you know. You got another, gosh, I can't remember how long now, but it's almost three years before, you you know, you get start getting the milk and good. Really? Are cows like other animals where they produce milk after having a baby? Right. They don't just naturally? Okay. Interesting. And a heifer is a cow that hasn't had a baby yet? Right. Okay. Female hasn't had a baby yet. Got it. Okay. What, what, so what? I'm teaching you all these farm I, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that's, you think having lived on one, I would remember any of this. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'll 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 learn things about cows. So you're watching chickens at the university while having a small dairy farm as well. What wild animals well, you did you collect? You couldn't really call it a dairy farm. You know? Right. Well, you tried. You tried <laughs> your tried, hand yeah, at making we, a dairy farm. Yeah. yeah go, that's okay. Like yeah. That. So you watch chicken. You were a chicken babysitter, and you tried to start a dairy farm. <laughs> is that is that about where we are? I tried farming. Dairy was just what barely. Did you, what did you farm? Huh? What did you you said you tried farming. What did you try to farm? Well, I was trying to get my dairy farm going. Back. Oh yeah, <laughs> I did a lot of hay. You know, we put a lot oh, of hay okay. up in the summertime and sold hay. And I bought horses in the fall, and I kept them over the winter because I had plenty of hay. Sure. And then sold them in the spring. Is that the point of having a horse? Like you get the horse, you get it healthy, whatever, and then you try to resell it. Well, that was my big thing back then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I had plenty of space for them and I had plenty of hay, so sure. people run short on hay, and boom. In the wintertime, hay gets very expensive. <laughs> sure, I bet. You got multiple revenue streams. Mm-hmm. That's smart. It's like it sounds like your family is just kind of like that. They all kind of do their own thing, trying to like they don't one thing, and then this is all that. They kind of diversify. Mm, well. Or is that oh, something you just do? I'm the one that did that. Yeah. yeah. My, my sister pretty much, no, not so much. Oh, that's true. My brother, uh, he got into the carpet business. He get, Well, actually, he went to school for refrigeration. Oh. And uh, graduated from that and didn't like refrigeration. And Fair. Started doing carpet business, and then he started his own business. Wow. Okay. So. Interesting. So <laughs> how long did you attempt the dairy farm before you're like, this is not worth it? <laughs> About almost five years. That's a long time yeah. to give it a shot. Yeah. I feel like most people do one, maybe two. Well, you you know, you ain't going to start anything the way I started it was, you know, back then you you pick up a, a calf for ten, fifteen dollars, sometimes oh. twenty dollars for a female, and mm-hmm. you know the bulls were were the cheapest. You can get them for ten bucks a piece back then. You know, I really now that tries to a hundred and some dollars just for newborns. I bet. <laughs> Man, that's pretty back, good. Back then, most dairy farms they didn't want to keep the bulls anyway, the males. Why? Well, they they weren't interested. They were mainly interested in, in the heifers and getting them up to milking size. Sure, you know. something that could produce. Yeah, whereas they, bulls are they just didn't for breeding. Waste if hay and all that stuff on on a on a bull that ain't gonna do nothing, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. It's about long term, what you can get your money out of later on. Yeah, most if you're in dairy, then you're not into beef, you know. Oh, really? Most places, yeah. Oh. You're either one or the other, but not usually both. I didn't know that. I say usually. Usually, yeah, exactly. There's exceptions. Because the people say, well, I know so and so. He had both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always the exception. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you, so, this is a long time ago. So, did you have machines hooked up to your cows, or did you no, have to go there and do it yourself not every day? Me. I I did it all by hand. I mean, it was one five cows. So, how, what are the hours like doing something like that? Well, I had to get up. I had got up at four, oh. and go out and get the get the cows all fed and ready, and then I'd milk them, and then I went off to work. Had to be at work at seven, and got off at at five. I'd get home about five five thirty somewhere around there usually. And get the cows in, get them ready, to feed them, and milk them again, and go in, eat supper, and go to bed. <laughs> Good Lord. So start, when did you sleep? I start all over the next morning. And you did that for five years? Yeah. It's <laughs> a long time. Yeah, it's seven days a week, too. Well, I didn't work at the uh-huh. university seven days a week. But, sure. You know, the dairy, the farming is 
seven days. Animals got to eat just as... Yeah, that's true. Every, every day, too. Ugh. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's why I got out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. So, why Arizona, then? That's not close. Had you been there before? No. You just closed your eyes and poked had, the map? No, I had a grandfather. My grandfather was there. Oh, okay. And I had an uncle there, too. And next town up, Pine. Arizona and Payson, Arizona. They're about, I don't know, 12, 15 miles apart, that's all. Sure. But went out there to see him and liked it. Really? Yeah. I mean, you do like hot weather. Yeah, well, it's uh, 5,000 feet high, so it wasn't that hot. Oh, really? Not like here. It's there's deserts, though. We got snow in the wintertime. And, oh, yeah, true. You know, it wasn't, you know, and that's when I got, got into mining and then... Uh, Forest Service tried to kick me out of the for <laughs> out of the mining business. <laughs> How do you get into mining? How do you just like I'm gonna start hitting rocks with a hammer and see if something's in it? <laughs> like, <laughs> how does this go? Oh, well, I had a burrow. What is that? Uh, a donkey. Oh, oh okay. Jackass. <laughs> oh, got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so you had a, a burrow. It's called. Yeah. Uh, well, a jackass burrow. burrow, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, it's yeah. a donkey. Is yeah. it a, a special kind of donkey? No, just well, another name actually for a donkey. Actually, they call them a sacred donkey, donkey because they got a cross on them. It's oh, a black stripe going down there, down their back, and then um, stripe on each side coming down the front quarters. Really? Yeah. Huh? And you just had one. You're like, this will be nice. I had three of them. You had three. Why did you? Why did you? <laughs> you just moved to Arizona and just bought donkeys? Well, I got into looking around at things. Uh, you know, I I uh, I started out. I worked in a gas station. That was my first job there. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, I talked to some people that were mining and prospecting and stuff. And I always wanted to do that. So that's I started doing that. And I got so I'd be, I'd take the burrows and go to the Matazel Wilderness area for oh, three, four weeks at a time just poking around down there. Yeah? Yeah. And you never got bored? No. Wow. I like that. That was really fun back then for me at that Sure. I was young still, you know. You just grabbed your donkeys and your yeah, grab stuff. Yeah, donkey and, just and go. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you? So did you go with anybody to, like, did somebody show you, like, this is a good rock, this is a bad rock? No. Really? No. You just winged it? Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I learned a little. Uh, out there, there's a lot of rock shops and stuff like that, you know. Okay. So you could, you know, do a little know research. A little bit about it. And I have read, did a lot of right reading and stuff like that. It, you know, it. You get it was just fun getting out there exploring. Sure, sure. And every once in a while, you'd run across something that was interesting. And okay, were you looking for something specific when you started, or you're just yeah, anything that was worth something. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you remember the first thing you found? Yeah. What was it? A lever right. Oh no! Don't do this. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's a lever right, Dad? <laughs> you lever right where you found it. <laughs> I have, like, PTSD from that word. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember the first time I walked right into it. We were on uh, uh, digging for quartz. And then I was like, oh, it's a Leverite. And me and Greg were, like, really excited. We're like, we found a Leverite. Check it out. And we're, like, showing it to each other. And you waited, which was the worst part. You didn't tell us right away. You let us celebrate for, like, a minute. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what's a Leverite? <laughs> Leverite, where well, you found it. We just threw it away. <laughs> or uh, a Wonderstone. What is, no, no. What you is, wonder why you picked <laughs> it up? <laughs> Did you find a lot of those? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. I even packed a lot of them out of the really? <laughs> out of them areas because <laughs> it was wilderness. You couldn't go in there with any kind of equipment, so you you know you had to either you know walk. That's why I had the burrows carry stuff. Oh. What do you, what do you bring? Like, what's your equipment list for something like that? Oh, I had a couple of uh, uh, tarps, you know. For uh, what? Can canvas tarps. In case it rained. Yeah. Okay. But we didn't. I didn't bother setting up tents ever. We just you just, slept on the ground. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, slept on the ground and or in between the canvas. In Arizona. Yeah. There's a lot of snakes in Arizona. Oh, snakes and scorpions. But uh, you shake your boots out in the morning and <laughs> shake, you shake your sleeping sleeping bag out before you crawl into it. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, I don't like it. So do you remember the first valuable thing you found? <sighs> well. I found a lot of a lot of copper ore that was really pretty. Really? 
Yeah, it was copper rock ore? with all this. It, it looked green, you know, all these green and blues, blues in it, you know. It's really? As you're writing malachite. Found a bunch of that, and and uh, found some galena, and and um, that was that was about it. I did uh, make some claims in there, and and uh, later on I sold them and made a little bit of money. That's well, one of the reasons why I took up sailing. I always wanted to sail the South Pacific. Ah. Oh. So I worked for the Forest Service there on the Tonto National Forest. Uh huh. When you, so, how do you identify something like these rocks that you're finding? Is it just random rocks and you're just hitting them open, or do you find like veins and do you dig like? Well, what is the? I know nothing the about this. The galena was in a vein. Uh, most of the stuff is, you f- you find it in chunks and veins and stuff. You know, it's it's a lot of luck. It, it sounds depend, like yeah, you know it. Uh, I, f- I did a little bit with cinnabob. It was on a slate, in the oh. slate. And it was um, a bright look. You know, the rock is, you know what slate is? Uh, no. Well, it's kind of a blackish, brownish rock that's really in like in the layers. Oh, okay. Well, this, this stuff here looked like someone took a bright red lipstick and streaked across it. Oh. And we used to grind that up into a powder in a ball uh, mill. It's a barrel that goes around, has these steel balls in it, and crush it all up. And then you... Um, Taken heated up under a, a, a system that has no leaks, and it looked like a still. And as you, you heated this stuff up, the mercury would vaporize out of it, and then you had a coil that cooled it down and went into water. Huh? Because the vapors from mercury are very they'll n- kill you, right? In no time. Yeah. That's why I'm loony now. I, I've always known. I thought it was genetic. <laughs> <laughs> but. We used to have to test the system. We used to take a bellows and uh, with a black light, and we put this phosphorescent powder in there and blow this stuff through the through the system. Mm-hmm. And any leak, we'd have it show up. Oh, that's pretty smart. And uh, we used to have to do that once a week. We checked it, make sure nothing was so the vapors weren't leaking, and we'd go crazy. Because a lot of the old gold prospectors actually were crazy because of that. Really? When they got their gold dust, they they separated it from. A from the black sand mm-hmm. with mercury. Uh. And so that gold would go in there, and then you take and put it in a chamois and squeeze out all the mercury. Mercury will come right out through a chamois mm-hmm. and lift you like a hard putty. Sure. And you take a potato, cut mm-hmm. it in half, make a hole in there, put your gold with the mercury in there, and then set it on your fry pan over the open fire. Well, of course, the mercury would all vaporize. Right into you. You know, the, these guys be breathing that stuff, and it actually made a lot of them crazy. Wow, that's like hatters, people that made hats. You know, they're like the Mad Hatter. You hear that saying? It's the same thing. Like they had a chemical that they would temper the hats with, and they'd be breathing in the fumes. Oh, and is that right? Go crazy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And you just figured this stuff out. Well, I didn't figure it all out. I, I mean, like you learned, but you didn't like take a class or like oh, do a no. thing for it. No. My my grandfather was into rocks, you know, like oh, agates really? and stuff geodes, like that. Yeah, yeah. minerals. Mostly ro- agates, petrified wood, stuff like that. He used to slice it and tumble it and make jewelry out of it. Okay. Stuff like that. Made tables with a sliced rock, agates and stuff. Is that where your interest in making jewelry started? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. my grandfather more or less got me into that. That's cool. We started doing the tumble stuff, and you actually grew just glued on bell caps. But Oh, really? Uh, I got out of that quick. Yeah. Got, yeah. Into, <laughs> got into silver and turquoise and making doing silver work. Okay, okay. Was that at the same time you were prospecting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty, that makes sense. You go out, you get the rocks and gems and stuff, come back, and make them into something. To well, you, mo- most of the rocks I got weren't quality of for making jewelry. But, oh, really? You know. You could just sell them as the rocks? Yeah, well, some of it, you know, you could make a halfway decent cab out of it and stuff. But, okay. You know. Not bad. So from there, you that's when you started working for the the Forest Service? Is that yeah. what it's called? Yeah, U.S. Oh. Forest Service. How'd that, how'd that happen? Well, I was mining amethyst at the time. Okay. And actually, at that time, I, I was making my living at it. That was my total. Really? 
Yeah. You just found so much that you could resell it and Yeah, well it was a big it was a big uh instead of just the little crystals, it was a big vein of quartz that had amethyst color to it. Oh, that's cool. And I'd bring out these rocks that weighed anywhere from about ninety pounds to about a hundred and forty pounds I'd break them up in. Good there. Lord. And I sold them to this one guy. He had a big diamond saw that cut them and they uh polished them up and they made like fi- w- used it for fireplaces and stuff like that it wasn't quality enough to make jewelry out of mm-hmm. but it was real pretty when you you know and nice had a purple purple hue to it and stuff like that so i sold a lot of that and i mean and then when the fire danger got so bad they they told me i couldn't go in there no more and I, well i was i gotta do it so sure they had locked the gate i cut the cut the <laughs> chain <laughs> I put my lo- own lock back on it. Did you? <laughs> so there's two locks on it. <laughs> and it was uh, almost, once you went in there, on the other side of the gate, in, in there, it was probably about, uh had to be about probably six, seven miles wow. down this old road that they used to make put a power line in mm-hmm. to get to it. And um, when I'd go in there and I'd, work for I don't know anywhere from four or five days at a time really and I'd bring out a bunch of stuff and and uh, when I come out one time there was a message with my wife at that time to uh the Phil the head ranger wanted to see me oh boy <laughs> that's never good <laughs> after you cut the lock already yeah <laughs> I like that they knew it was you <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I'll make a long story short. You want to know what it take for me to get it, not go in there because of the fire danger. He was worried about me starting a fire in there. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I said, this is how I make my living. He said, well, I wonder if you come to work with us. <laughs> so that's how I started into working with the Forest Service. Really? Yeah. Because you ate up their lock budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never touched their lock. Oh, that's good. If I cut their lock, I, then they had me for bad but i just cut the chain put a lock back on it so that it was oh uh, okay didn't you know that's if I, smart if i cut their lock then i couldn't have locked it back up and then they oh that's got, true got me for destroying government property for, there you, you go know, you got to know the stuff. crimes ahead of time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you so how did you find that amethyst vein just hitting mm. stuff and got lucky well no i i had heard that people had found found amethyst, you know, some low-grade amethyst in there one time. So I just went in there and spent a couple of days up going up and down all them hills and finally found this spot that was, you know, I had quite a bit of it in there. It, like I say, it wasn't gem quality, but it, sure. but it was in such big pieces that you could get that uh, slicing it and make for fireplaces and walls and you know, just de- decorative. Sure. Stuff. It was real, real good for that. And uh, I had saved up. I bought a little portable drill. Nice. And then these uh, wedges, the three-piece wedges. You drill the hole. Mm-hmm. You drill about six holes, and you'd put these wedges in there, and and what it would it'd go into the hole, and then you had a, a a V-shaped wedge that went down in between the first two pieces that you put in there oh and it split the rock up oh that's pretty cool and or sometimes i used to take and uh uh lime pack it and put what's that well you take lime and wet it and fill the hole full of it and plug the hole up and that one lime would expand and break it too they do it that way oh. you don't get the fractures that way because you can't you can't use explosives on that stuff because it fractures it too much oh. So okay. You have to do it in a way that you're not going to ruin your whatever you're trying to get. Huh. Did you ever, like, have a contested find? You know, like, if you found something and some other guy came around and he was like, I found it too. Like no. in the Old West movies? No, I never had that problem. That's good. Yeah, no. Uh, when I was in the Maldives, I was little bit looking for gold in there, though. There was an old guy in there that was had been in there since the depression oh, oh no <laughs> and everybody was kind of aloof of him and he didn't he didn't do well with people either so uh, he'd come out once in a while with a little bit of gold never found a lot but he'd come out with a little and he lived on it mm-hmm. and i'd see him off in the distance a lot 
and then I don't know probably I was in there going in and out of there for about six months and he finally come down to talk with me and he turned out to be a pretty nice guy showed me a lot of ropes that you know oh, that's cool a little insider nice tips because I mean I was just I didn't know nothing about stuff like that when I went out there sure but uh, he showed me a few things and which was very helpful that's cool nice guy but you know everybody nobody really knew him you know because sure he was a loner and a little standoffish yeah that's all right so, so it's it seems like a lot of things that you do, you just kind of winged it for a while. Oh, like you yeah. <laughs> I mean, everything I've done <laughs> in life, yeah. I've winged it. <laughs> so when you're starting in the for, in the fire service, what does that job entail? Cutting a lot of brush. Yeah? <laughs> is, it, is it like that movie that we saw, The Only the Brave? Yep. It's like that? Yeah. Like if there's a fire, if there's a forest fire, they send you guys in and you try to contain it? Yep. Do you? That, that's exactly right. But, oh. you know, when there's no fires, you know, then... We did a lot of uh, put fire breaks around dumps and different, uh, like Arizona is, is mostly privately and not privately, is mostly government-owned land, either oh, reservations okay. or forest service or land or BML land. Okay. And very little actually private land is very small of a percentage. I think it's less than 20%, something like that, of the state is really? privately owned. And uh, some of these places are privately owned are just small little patches in, in the middle of the forest. Mm -hmm. And lots of times we'd go in and put a fire break around the town. So if they had a fire in that town or one of the cabins and they wouldn't get in, so it wouldn't get into the forest so fast. But other than that, sometimes we played a lot of soccer and, you know. Stayed stay fit. Staying fit. Yeah. That was a big thing, you know. Sure. When you get out on the fire line, it was tense. You had to be pretty much on. What is a fire break? Well, we'd we'd cut a swath. It depends on what what the surrounding area was. You know, usually we tried to keep it within th about three feet mm -hmm. and a uh, three foot path all the way around it that we cleared right down to bare ground. And anything on the fire side of it, well, if it was trees and stuff, we'd cut them and fall them in so they were away from it so that they wouldn't catch fire and fall across the fire line. We, oh. So a fire break is like, it's the line that you make when they like cut all everything out so yep. that there's no, what do they call it, fuel? You take it right down to fairground. Really? Yeah. Did you get pretty quick at it? Because you got to be. Well, it's 20 people. Oh, okay. Hot that's shot crew was 20. Oh, yeah, you were a hot shot. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's what I started out as hot shot. Really? How long did you do that for? About three years, and then they, the fourth year I was on the uh, helicopter crew, and then the fifth year uh, they, I got promoted to uh, uh, fire prevention technician. I drove around a forest service truck at campgrounds telling people what, <laughs> you know, about <laughs> where them, to please, take Please, please don't do the fire. <laughs> Change signs and you know just that doesn't sound as fun. Oh, that was that was nice. Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. like that better? Well, you're not staring into a fire. Yeah. Did you well, ever get burned? No. That's no, good. I got hot a few times. I'm never, sure. <laughs> never burned. That's good. That's good. I think about like because in only the brave, you know, they like they yeah. they ended up getting killed. Oh yeah. But I think about like, is, is, is there so many things that can go wrong in a yeah. fire like that trying to contain it? Well, see, that that happened right over, no, probably about 60 miles from where I work. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Another forest. We, I was on the Toronto, and that was on the forest next to us. What's something that, like, you don't expect going into something like that? You know, like, something that you learned on the job in a fire. What's something people don't know about fires like that? You know what I mean? Oh. That, uh, like, I don't know how to phrase the question. You know what I mean? Like... Uh, like I don't know it's like working on cars it's like yeah it's fine but then you don't realize that there's always this one small screw that you can't get to blah blah, blah. but like when you're fighting a fire what's something that was a surprise you don't get coffee breaks yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought there'd be water <laughs> <laughs> well you carried your water with you you know but you had to do that but um i don't know that once if you have any sense at all you know, it, it's, it's nothing really surprising about it, other yeah. than the fact that, you know, it, I guess, well, 
one fire we were at was a steep hill and it was really hot and dry mm -hmm. and i actually saw trees explode ahead of the fire really the heat, yeah when they when the heat would they get so hot and the fire would all of a sudden hit them and the trees would just about ex they would they, well they would almost explode like you know really like, yeah the fire would travel up them hills. Going uphill, it goes real fast. Really? Yeah. You can't outrun it, that's for sure. That's what I was wondering as well, yeah. like how fast fires actually work. Because oh. you hear about them, but, like, you don't know till you know. Yeah, well, you, well, it comes up them hills faster than you can outrun them. I can tell you that. Really? Because uh, the draft goes up the hill, and it dries everything out super dry. So it's like preheating. Preheats it. Yeah. And so when the fire hits it, it ignites it immediately jeez that's not a good place you want to be were you on the downhill side or the uphill <laughs> side when that happened well what you do is you try to tr well you try to keep a line around the bottom and then the sides and and then the top you know the very top so mm -hmm. because if, if it gets up to the top then when it goes down the other side of course it's slower right going downhill and you know that's why you try to get get ahead of it a little bit sure Jeez. But How many fires did you engage? Is that the word? What do you yeah. say? Engage the fire? Is that the term? Oh, yeah. Work on? Oh, I don't know. Work it's against? Quite a few. A lot? Because they sent us to California from fires sometimes. They sent oh. us to Idaho. They send you out of state? Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, whenever they could. They, You know, fires got bad. It's, they'd call them in. Like, the, a lot of the hotshot crews around our area, area in arizona they had a lot of indian hotshot crews oh cool and they'd bring them in for as standby lots of times too sure you know and things like that i did work in the in the uh lookout tower up at diamond head point diamond head point oh that's cool one time for, used to work the woman's day off that was kind of fun there you go but that tower stuck up there and it got struck so much by lightning so whenever a storm came in, you unplugged everything. Oh, really? <laughs> and they had this big wooden chair with insulators that you see on the telephone pole, them old green insulators. Oh, yeah, yeah. One on the bottoms of the chair, and you sat in that chair with your feet up. Oh, you know, underneath <laughs> just your, in case? Yeah. yeah you That's a little that's stressful. Little, you sat there, but, I mean, the place would get hit. The tower would get hit actually so many times that the guide wires and the grounding wires would actually, you could see them starting to turn cherry red sometimes out there. Really? Yeah. Were you ever up there when it got hit? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. What's that like? Uh, well, I mean, it's just... Is it loud? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's... Uh, you You got everything unplugged and you're sitting in the chair, so you're pretty much safe inside there, you know. That's good. And it's all metal around you, but you, the floors are all wooden and the chair is wooden and you're on an insulator and, you know, you're not touching anything whatsoever, so... That's a lot of faith you got there in the system. <laughs> <laughs> but... The guide wires would actually glow red sometimes. Wow. On the on a hotshot crew, does do people have specific jobs, or does everyone do the same job no, and just no, help? No, no, you have so many people with fire, with shovels. So many people with, like these, uh, look like an axe, but they got a hook on the end of them. Oh, cool. Real good for cutting brush. And then you had guys that would, were ch with chainsaws. Really. And you had guys that, you know, uh, li like the shovels. One side of your shovel, you always kept it razor sharp because you, you you could use it for actually cutting brush with it. Oh, swung and that's smart. Cutting brush. That was mainly, you know. Is that what you did? Or do you rotate? No, I ran chainsaw most of the time. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I'd cut wood all my life. And oh, yeah, fair. I knew, you know, mo more than most people did on using chainsaw. So they put me on a chainsaw. Okay, that helps. Worst part about that, then I had to carry it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. In in the movie, I remember they had this like can of like stuff that basically they started fires too. Oh yeah, like, that's backfiring. Yeah, what is, what is that? Well, yeah, that kerosene thing that you spray kerosene and start fires to make it go the other way. Uh, on the uh, you know you've already got your fire break. Uh huh. And then you take and uh, start the start the ground on fire you know close to the fi fire break and it burns up all the fuel so when the big fire gets there there's nothing to, uh, to feed on. okay that makes sense makes it go out sure because it can't keep moving because you've already burned where yeah. it was going after yeah. it. okay that makes sense that makes sense 
Then after that, you said you were on the helicopter crew. Yeah. You didn't fly it. No, 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 no. What what is the, what is the helicopter crew? What does well, that do? Well, what they did is they dropped you off on these, like, these big old trees. Nag, they called them nags. Mm-hmm. Would you know, big dead trees. Every once in a while, they get hit, hit mm-hmm. and catch fire in the middle of the woods. And what they the helicopter did was take you in and drop you down so you could, uh, you know, you know they put two guys on on the thing would take and cut it down and stay stay there overnight until it was out. Make oh. sure it didn't spread. We put a fire line a line around it. Really? Were they the same people that like you see them? They drop a ton of stuff like no, water or something. Slurry. Yeah. What's that? That's well, not water. Actually, it's a fertilizer, but it's a oh. red stuff that uh, uh, they mix up and they drop it, and it it's a fire prevention, fire yeah. retardant rather. You know, it dries on the leaves and makes it so the fire don't burn so quick. Huh? Did you ever get dropped on? Yeah. Really? <laughs> but we locked out. I mean, uh, sometimes I've seen it come out of the planes where it almost was one big chunk. <laughs> I mean, when it hits, it actually uh. broke trees off and all kinds of things. So really? you got to be careful. When when they come in, we'd lay on the ground facing it. And sure. Hope, they, hope, <laughs> hope they their aim is on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, you're the, so the helicopter team that you were on, it's like a, it's like a fireman SWAT team. They like go in, you drop you in, and then you kind of... Yeah. That's pretty neat. There's two, two, two people at a time that, that drop us off. And sometimes, you know, we'd be quite a ways away from it where they put us down at. Mm-hmm. We'd have to hike to it. And uh, what they did when they when they got going, they'd, uh, the uh, helicopter would go to the fire and see how it was doing, where they dropped you off, and then they'd come circle around behind you, and then they'd go over your head... And they'd be actually right towards, they'd be going right towards the fire so you'd get your compass reading so you know which way to where the fire was and where to go. Oh. Which direction. Because huh. from the ground you couldn't tell where where it was. You sure. Know, in the forest. And, you know, it, of course, when you get out, get down on the desert, you can see a lot more. You can see the mountains. But when up there where I was on the ta- tunnel up on the rim, it's, you know, you couldn't couldn't tell where you where you were you couldn't see nothing other than the tree ahead of you you sure because so dense people don't realize i mean it's got the largest uh stand of ponderosa pine anywhere really yes and it it gets some places gets pretty thick between the pine and and the other stuff they um it it gets you know you can't see where you're going half sometimes you know they got a lot of brush and what not so sure and then they put you on the ground in your own truck yeah no no truck no with a oh, forest okay. ranger thing yeah. really you didn't no, even get your own on, like when you're on the hot shot crew you, you know oh no no, no no i mean at, from the hot shot thing then you became the the ranger forest ranger yeah is that what it was well, no, you get a truck no. for that i was fpv F, fire prevention technician <laughs> what is that do you get a truck for that do you yeah. get like a cool park ranger truck yeah you look like a you know, you li- almost like a park ranger. You okay. Know, you went around like when you wasn't fighting fire. You went around the campgrounds, made sure they were all cleaned up, and everybody was doing what they were supposed to do. And you post took down different signs, like you know, if you went from moderate to high, you know, you had to change the signs and things like that. That sounds like a park ranger. Uh, well, a lot. Well, it's, it's a cooler title. Qu- quite a bit like a park ranger, but. You know, when the fire was, whenever we had a fire, that was what we went for. You know? Sure, sure, okay. If they had car fires in the for in the, on the on the thing, they'd send send. send Did that happen? That. Oh yeah. Yeah. They had a they had a, a diesel uh, fuel truck, big gas like a big gasoline truck. Yeah. The only haul on dealer, diesel. He was coming up towards space and he got in an accident. He flipped over. And they ripped a hole in the side of the thing, and all this diesel ran down the down the side of the road and into the ditch. And then when it went down for quite a ways, it went into a culvert and a, on the other side, and then down a big hill. Oh no! And I had to babysit that for a while, make sure. Oh. Kind of wet it down so that if someone threw a cigarette out, it wouldn't start. You know? Sure. But Man. I babysit that for a couple of days before they got. Uh, the soapy water and stuff like that to break it down enough so it would, wouldn't be a danger anymore. 
That's crazy. I got called out of that at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, no. <laughs> and where it was, there was uh, in this canyon where, you know, the radios didn't work. You couldn't get out. It was uh-huh. talking anything. So, you know, you do what you have to do. And then if you had to call in anything, you had to go up on the top of the hills. And oh, no. <laughs> drive up there to talk and then go back down. How long? So how long did you do that for? Well, I did that just during fire season with the Forest Service. Okay. So, you know, I did that, well, one, two, three, four, uh, almost five years, I guess. Really? And you were the fire technician for the last year? Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Fire prevention. Fire prevention technician. There you go. FPT. Okay. FPT. Not bad. <laughs> Out of the three, which one was your favorite? FPT. Really? Oh, yeah. You got to talk to a lot of people. And, oh, okay. That makes you sense. You know, it, like, you know, you... Coming back from the ranger station up to where we were staying there one time down by Lake Roosevelt, we, we saw a bunch of, saw, saw this tent. They were set up in one of the washes. So we went down there, come find out it was these, these two girls. They had, in college, they, they put the tent in the wash because it was soft sand there. Oh. Well, you don't. What is, what is wash? What is that? Well, where, when it rains up in the mountains, uh-huh. You know, you may not rain where you are, but up in the mountains, they get a lot of rain fast, and that water comes down through there so fast that, oh. you know, it washes you right away. Oh. So we told them they couldn't camp there and had to be able to move out and found a place for them, dug a trench around them in case it rained. And all there that you stuff. go. Those things did things like that. That's cool. That's cool. Is there anything crazy going on in parks those days? Well, one time coming back to it, the same thing along Lake Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. Come back, and it was fire danger was really high, and you're not supposed to have fires other than in designated camping areas. Sure. And come by, and they had this big bomb fire down there. So ah. this friend of mine that was riding with me, I always had one person with me. That's good. So we go down in there, and we get down there, and come find a big motorcycle gang down there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and there were... They were plant getting. They were having a wedding. <laughs> really? That's not something you want to interrupt. <laughs> big fire going, and I, I told Paul, I said, when I got out, I said, you get on that radio and you stay there, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> just in case. And you know, I went up and talked, found out who the head one was that was in charge of it, and I, I told him the problem. I said, you know, if this gets out, then you guys are liable for it and all that stuff. And sure. And he was really pretty good, you know, and he says, I, I told him, I says, you know, I says, you got to put that fire out, you know, I says, if it, it's just too hot. It's not where it's supposed to be to begin with, and the fire danger was too high, so. Sure. Anyway, I told him, I said, we can come in with a truck, because the truck carried water. It was a small truck, but it had a little water tank and a hose on it for small fires. Mm-hmm. So I told him we could put it out, and he's. He says, okay, so anyway, I signal Paul to come down, bring the truck down, and he come down. We put the fire out, and while we're doing all these guys, woo. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the members was a was a minister, too, that he was the one that was going to marry him. So mm-hmm. anyway, when he got down, we talked with him for a little bit. Of course, we looked like them, you know. Right, Paul you got big old beards. A, Paul had a big beard, and I had a beard, and. So we talked with them, and I wasn't, you know, I was nice with it. I wasn't pushy or anything. And, sure. And uh, they invited us back for the wedding. So hey, there you go. We went back to where we were staying and turned the truck back in and, and came back down with our own cars and celebrated the wedding. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's pretty cool. They're pretty neat, neat, neat people. That's neat. But I met a lot of nice people doing that, you know. I did. Sure. People, families, camping and stuff like that. That makes sense. You do like people a lot. Mm. So, and it beats, you know, being in the face of a fire. So, yeah. <laughs> slightly less stressful than talking into a biker gang's wedding. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the probably the most scariest thing out of all the years that I did the firefight. Yeah, that's fair. That, that, that. <laughs> Almost shutting down a biker wedding. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Almost wanted to just go buy it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look the other way. But. Right, right. So then, what did you what did you do after that? Well, from there, that's when I I. That's when you saved up and bought the boat. Yeah, well, I had uh, I had a pawn shop. 
Oh, okay, the cool. Store. That's I was doing the pawn shop and jewelry in the off season. Then when I wasn't working for for service. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, what I ended up doing was I uh, I sold the sold the business as off and the, my mining claims off. And that's when I went to San Diego and bought a boat. Not bad. I wanted to sail the South Pacific. Just cause that was a dream. Yeah. So I when did, did that it. When did that dream start? When I was little. Really? Even as yeah. a little kid in New Hampshire yeah. with no electricity, yeah. you're like, a boat. Well, just, uh, you know, I heard stories about the South Pacific and, you know, and when I was in the service, I hit a, I was in a lot of the tropics. And sure. I liked it. I liked sure. the tropics. So, you know, I bought a boat. Never been sailing before in my life. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you pick the boat? Did you just wing that as well? You're like, this looks like it could do it. Or did you have to do like a bunch of research to no, get the right one? Well, when I went to San Diego, I went around to these marinas that was had boats for sale and looked at a lot of them. Mm-hmm. And the problem was, my biggest, one of the biggest problem was when I come in to look for a boat to buy, the salesman never, didn't take me seriously, you know. Like, oh. I went to some place, they were so rude, they didn't even come over to talk to me when I, you know. If I asked them a question, they'd just barely answer the an- answer and pay no attention. Really? Well, I was up at Dana Point. I was talking to this young kid mm-hmm. at, at, a, at a, a boat place there. And uh, I told him what I wanted to do and all that stuff. And he says, he says, I got a good boat, I think, for you. So he took, I mean, he was nice. He, he waited on me like, he, you know. Like a person? Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, because, you know, before... I had long hair, hippie, you know, long beard, long hair, shorts, and raggy old T-shirt. That exactly style, the way you look you know, now. <laughs> pair, of, pair of thongs. Sure. That was, that was my style. Sure. It hasn't changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, he took me down. He said, you want to go out on it? I said, geez, I'd love to. I'd never been sailing before even. Yeah. Yeah, so we went out, and I got seasick. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a Columbia 34, mm-hmm. and it had it was a um, one that had a lot of freeboard on it. What's know? that? Well, the sides come up out of the water. Oh, from the water line up to the top of the boat was about almost four foot. So I mean, it was I liked it, and and then down below it you had so much space compared to a lot of the other boats. Mm-hmm. It was a Columbia Mark II, I think it was, 32-footer Mark So I can't remember exactly, but anyway, it's one of the big ones. looked like a big bathtub. I mean, oh. it didn't look like a, a sleek-looking sailboat. Yeah. <laughs> but it was big. Sure. <laughs> Had a big wide beam. and But anyway, that's the one I got. Really? And so I started taking it out every day, and every day I'd come back so sick. Yeah. <laughs> and when I come in, everybody would run, come running down to push push me off from the boat <laughs> when I come in I'd to make sure you didn't hit theirs <laughs> <laughs> after about third or fourth day I got so I could get it in the sloop without crashing into anybody <laughs> okay that's good that's important <laughs> but every day I mean I got so sick I was wondering if I was ever going to be able to do it but really all of a sudden the albacore tuna were running out there <laughs> really <laughs> yeah they were quite a ways out there sure and I wanted to go see if I could catch one you know, they like, you can't catch sail, them things on a sailboat. Nah, 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 nah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I said, I got to go out there and try. So anyway, we went out, and we spent the night out there. And the next day, we, we did get, get into fish. And we caught some, some fish. Caught one albacore, finally. That was oh. the third day. But after the second day, I finally got over my seasickness. Really? Yeah. Huh. And I felt good after that. And then... The next day, when when we come back in, uh, I was go- had to do some work for a couple of days, didn't get out. And then when I went back out, I got sick again. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Just when you got comfortable? <laughs> yeah. So, it, but I mean, all the time I was sailing, whenever I was at a calm anchorage for more than two or three days, I'd go out, and if it was rough, I'd always get seasick. Really? Yeah, the first day I could count on being seasick the first day. I mean, all them years I sailed, and it still happened that way. Really? Yeah. Did you throw up every time? Oh, most every time yeah. I had the fish. Oh. oh. Fish got to eat, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're just doing a service. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing was, one time in Hawaii, my sister and brother-in-law come visit me. Mm-hmm. And I was on um, uh, Oahu. 
and so I wanted to, they wanted to go sail. I said, well, we'll go sail over to Maui. So we we left. We left at night, so we sailed so sail all night and be there in the morning. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was so sick. I was the only one that my sister and brother-in-law had never been sailing. They didn't even get sick. They're fine. The, sick. <laughs> the captain of the boat is the one throwing up on the side. Feeding the fish. That's right. Yeah, of course. Yes, feeding the fish. Oh, that's, there's a term. That's so funny. So, uh, so then how long did it take you practicing back and forth before you're like, I'm just going to go for it? Well, I had to learn how to sail and get the boat ready. When I bought the boat, it was all right for cruising the coast not catalina islands things like that but mm-hmm. i wanted blue water sailing so sure i took it from dana point down to kettenberg's in san diego mm-hmm. and we changed all the rigging put heavier rigging on it that's the cables that hold the mass up oh okay you know. got it and uh put heavier rigging on it put an extra water tank in it put an extra uh fuel tank in it and uh Learned how to sail it. <laughs> yeah, smart. <laughs> yeah, that last part's kind of important. And uh, I went to uh, San Diego College had a had a uh, course on uh, navigation. Oh, that's cool. So I, I I was taking that. And when I bought the boat, my plan was to be was to leave one year to the day. You know, after buying the boat, because so many people had bought boats, they were sitting and we saw. Sitting around, we kept talking, talked to so many people. Oh, we're going to sail. We're going to go down to, we're going to do the South Pacific. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And I asked them, well, how long have you had your boat? Oh, four years. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and they had tied up at the dock all the time. Said, well, I'm going to do it within a year. Okay. So we got the boat, got the boat all ready and everything. I found crew members. And, and uh, so the day we were supposed to leave, was that we had put so much, got, went out and got all the groceries and put them all in and put them away and all that stuff, had everything tied down, ready to sail. And everybody was exhausted. So I said to heck, oh, well, let's go to the movie. We'll get, get, get our last good meal, go to the movies, and come back and go to bed. And that's what we did, and we got up early in the morning and left that next morning. It took 19 days to go from San Diego to Hawaii, to Hilo, Hawaii. That's where I pulled in at. Wow. And you didn't get lost. No, I that's good. That. Yeah. First, first crossed yeah. ocean trip. Yeah. Not bad. And I made it. There you <laughs> go. That had to feel pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, that w- my longest trip was twenty twenty seven days, but that was on my second. Wow. Trip. That was from Hawaii to the Marshall Islands. Really. And it took me twenty three days from Hawaii to the Marquesas Islands. Jeez. That was my second longest trip. That's a that long was time. With the first boat, the South Pacific. The second boat I did, North Pacific. Oh, I didn't realize you had two boats. Yeah. Interesting. The The second boat was a 32 footer. Really? Columbia, yeah. Different style altogether. It looked like more of a sleek. Sure. You know, <laughs> <a sailboat. laughs> like, like a sailboat? <laughs> yeah, like most people normally would see. In yeah. How big is the crew for something like that? I usually had one to two people, depending on yeah. what I was doing. Like, going uh, long distances and stuff, I usually had two, you know, island hopping one. Sure, okay. Depending on, you know, how many girls were available. Fair, <laughs> fair. <laughs> that I makes was sense. single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Did So, on the on the 19-day trip, how much of that did you spend sick? Just the first, first day. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because I had, you know, we had, I had had the boat uh, for a year by then. So, right, okay. Know, I did a lot of sailing down into Mexico, Baja, and mm-hmm. did, did that. I did quite a few trips with it like that that year. What do you eat? Fish? <sighs> well, we ate a lot of fish. And when you catch fish out there like that and eat it that day, it's it, it just don't taste the same as what you get. In a it good way or a bad way? Good. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Man, fresh fish is so much better. I bet. I bet. And uh, most of the time w- when we were sailing, we we ate basically two meals a day. We'd eat breakfast, and then usually we had popcorn in the afternoon. Almost every day we had popcorn. Oh, just because it's uh, light and easy to get? And Well, everybody liked pop. I love, you know. I'm a I know you like popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> so we ate popcorn. Yeah, you ate popcorn. Fair. Captain says. And the thing is, you know, uh, 
they took turns making the meals. So you know, mm -hmm. to go down and make make popcorn was an easy was easy, and everybody liked it. And sure, it was good. So you Not know, bad. we ate two good meals a day and popcorn for lunch. Okay, okay. How do you pass the time, or is sailing like a full time thing where you always got to be on it? Well, for me, the first boat when I did my navigation with a sexton, mm -hmm. I took uh, sightings three times a day. And then to do the, all the math work, I mean, you had two different books. You had to look up numbers and figures and do all this. This I had a paper. Really? It was just full because you had to put in how high your eye was above the water line. Uh huh. And then you subtract this and do this and add that and Jeez. look up this and do that and you what latitude you were at and longitude. And it it would take me from the time it started to. A, so I had a somewhat near fix would take me about three quarters of an hour. Really? Just yeah. to find out where you were? Well, it took three. three. When I was using the sun, it take three. Really? Three different fixes. And it put you in a triangle, and you were somewhere in that triangle. Huh. So, you know, if you, the more accurate you was on your readings when the, with the sexton, the smaller the triangle. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, like math. I math. did so much math. Yeah. It always oh, lots and lots of math. Well, mm -hmm. the second boat I had, I had a sat nav, so that was real easy. You push a couple of buttons and it'd tell you sure. within 10 yards of where you were. That's <laughs> night and day. It's like it's like yeah. when you had no power to living in the city. Yeah, yeah you you know, you you had to wait for a satellite to be above a certain degree in the horizon, you know, if sure. it was too low it wouldn't be accurate. But if, you know, you got a satellite that was really high, I mean, it did put you within about 10 yards of... Wow. You know, it was real accurate. Good thing you're good at math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to use math on that one. That's you know, good. But, uh, you did know, just punch. Remember which buttons to punch. At it. Did you ever get lost? Well... <laughs> 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 that well is very knowing. Well, <laughs> well you yeah, sort of. Okay. When... I was coming back from uh, Vanuatu, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I was heading up to American Samoa. This is after, after the, all going all the way west and coming back. I was going to stop at American Samoa. Well, for almost a week, we had cloudy weather. Couldn't see stars. Couldn't see the sun. Oh. All I could do is estimate where I had gone every day. You know. Sure. And I finally, got to the point where I figured we had to be close. So. Uh, I took the I got an RDF which was a radio direction finder mm -hmm. I got that out and got up there and come find out we had passed American Samoa by a, a whole day oh no <laughs> we had to turn around <laughs> and go a whole day's worth back because it was a long trip from there up to Hawaii so, sure well Palmyra then up to Hawaii but there's no place to to uh, stock up anything in Palmyra or anything like that so sure you had to stock up in American Samoa, that was the last place you could get, you know, stock up. We bought every bag of popcorn that was <laughs> yeah. in the island. <laughs> I mean, if you like something. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, 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 I did miss American Samoa one time, and then and we had to turn around and go back to get, get there. That's pretty good odds, though. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't get no, couldn't get any fixes because we didn't see the sun or the stars for almost five days. Wow. And then one other time I really got worried was one time I was I had left the uh, Marshall uh, no, no, this is South Pacific went left the uh, Marquesas Islands mm -hmm. and was going to Tahiti and you go through the two motors as a pass where most boats go through mm -hmm. but I, when I was there I, I did a lot of the islands atolls that are islands because mm -hmm. uh, nobody usually stops there because there so many of them and they're shallow and it's real dangerous a lot of boats get lost there sure. But me, why not? I like <laughs> out of the way places. Yeah, so, that's true. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going this going to towards Tahiti after we had got done, and I saw this. We saw a sailboat on the horizon. He was going the other direction. We brought got him up on the radio and come find out he was going to Tahiti too. Oh, but he was going the other direction that I was. Oh, and I mean this. This was uh, I'd been sailing now about. Uh, maybe six months 
Yeah, okay. And, you know, I still wasn't really sure of myself all the time. You know, I felt Right. Bad. But then when I saw this guy, and I mean, he had a great big boat and all this stuff, and and he was going the wrong direction. Well, I should go in a different direction than I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were both going the same place. Right. <laughs> and it put a worried me. I bet. <laughs> put a worried right to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, come find out he was wrong and I was right. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. So we got into Tahiti, and he come in the, the day afterwards. Really? That's yeah. funny. <laughs> what did you do? You have a favorite place that you went to over there in the South Pacific? Fiji. Fiji? Why uh, Fiji? I liked Fiji. I liked the Kandavo group. The diving was great. Mm-hmm. The people were friendly. No roads down there. No vehicles. Really? When I was there, it was. Uh, Really, really nice. I, you know, the other boats had come in there, but they'd spend the day and be gone. You know, I sure. I spent uh, about six weeks down. Really? There. Yeah. And I got to know the villagers, and I mean, whenever I went, they'd take me out looking around and up in the mountains and stuff like that. We'd be gone all day. I mean, the chief would actually put someone on my boat, and I, in Fiji out down there, I never worried about anybody stealing anything sure i mean they'd be on my boat all by themselves just watching it but when they when they got ready to leave and i get back to my boat and they got ready to leave like if someone had my t-shirt on they'd always point it out that he had my t-shirt sure or he had my watch on or something like that he would would never stick it in his pocket it always try to sneak it sight, and he'd make sure you saw it and the thing is if you let him off the boat with it like my sneakers that was something they always loved yeah. <laughs> you know, my extra sneakers. You know, they'd always point it out, and if you let them go with it, then they would. it was theirs. Sure. They'd and, ask. But they would not They would not stick something in their pocket or hide it and take it off the boat. That's I mean, cool. I thought that was, was really, really, really neat. Because, right. Because, uh, you know, I, I never lost a thing down there. That's as cool. As far as that goes. And, I mean, people were on my boat all the time, and I wasn't, you know. Sure. So that was the, like, compared to Western Samoa. Western Samoa, man, they'd come out. When you were on your boat sleeping, they, they were coming out there to take anything they could get off. Oh, no. A <laughs> <laughs> little different. Yeah. The, one of the boats that tied up beside me, they come out there, and they was taking his gas cans off. <laughs> oh, no. And the, the, the uh, uh, canoe bumped up against his boat, woke him up, he went up there on deck, unloading his gas can, and man, he pulled oh, no. out a gun, and so oh, they no. fired it in the end, they jumped in the water, left left that dinghy, that canoe right there. Oh, no. <laughs> so he picked up the canoe and left. Oh, well, I mean, hey, you kind of you kind of earned it. <laughs> wow. But, you know, that was that was probably one of the worst places as far as thefts goes. But, sure. But... Fiji, even on the mainland, uh, I really liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's not that way now, but when I was there, if you went into a hotel or a restaurant, tipping was not allowed. Really? Yeah. It was, at that time, it was their pleasure to wait on you, and, you know, you came to the co- their country to see them and mm-hmm. see things, and and they didn't want tips. You wow. Know? It was... Uh, they were just pl- proud to have you there, and, and, you know, they were really, really nice people. Yeah, it just sounds super friendly. But uh, afterwards, I think it's changed a lot, after, especially after they had the coup down there and all that stuff. Sure. It. But Makes sense. I've been back, but, you know, that was back in <laughs> late 70s, I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's 70, yeah, middle to late 70s. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> I wasn't born for a while. So, did they speak English? Like, you're able to communicate In with Fiji, them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Quite a few of them spoke English. Yeah. That's good. You met a chief. That's cool. Huh? You met a chief. That's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Met a couple of them, and uh, met a, a chief when I was in uh, Tonga. Tonga. Where's that? Uh, it's. We went there from uh, Western Samoa. It's okay. South, and then went to Tonga, and then from Tonga back up to Fiji. Gotcha. So, okay. But um, it, it was real nice in Tonga too. You know, I mean, it, it, everywhere I went, I I just enjoyed it so much. Of course, every day I was in the water, either shelling or fishing or something. You know. Sure. Never got bored. 
Is Tonga where you got the birds? Yeah. That's pretty cool. I got got the uh, shining parrots. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And San Diego Zoo got them now. Really? Uh, yeah, that's why they ended up going. Because uh, the only reason I was a, they're they're protected there in Tonga now. But when I was there, it's on an, actually an island away from the South Island. Mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it now. But anyway, there's a, there's an island off the South Island, a small one, mm-hmm. and that's where the birds were. Well, I got in good with the chief there, and he went, got some of the guy, some of the the people, took me up into the woods, and they actually got got the birds for me. Oh, they just caught them. Yeah. Oh. They were babies. Really? Yeah. They they, they climbed up and got them out of the nest. They were babies. Oh, I didn't know. And that. Um, and. You know, we hand hand fed them. At night, when they when I slept, I had a towel on my chest, and they would three little ones would lay there in the on my chest. Really? <laughs> oh, that's pretty <laughs> neat. Keep keep warm because it got pretty cold down there at night. They got really? the Arctic current comes up through there. Oh, uh, okay. And the water was cold. Really, I bet ocean water is cold. Yeah. So uh, when I went diving there, I had to put a hood. And a, Hood and everything, wet jacket, wet suit, and hood and everything on. Really? Or I couldn't stay in the water very long. So, but I did a lot of shelling there. There was some nice shells out there. That's pretty neat. You got yeah. birds from a chief in Tonga. Yeah. And the only reason I was able to get them off, get them out of there, and get it back into this country was the fact that I had papers from the chief saying that you know there was a present for me. Really? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Were you? So were you in? When did you choose Hawaii as, like, home base? Because you lived there for a long time. Yeah, well, I was coming back to um, San Diego. Mm-hmm. I, You know, coming out, we came from from, from um, Samoa, American Samoa, to Palmyra, then up to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And I was, I stayed there for a little while, and I was getting ready to go back to San Diego. Right. I got some crew members. Nice. And we were about three days out, and the girl, with the, one of the girls, brought a bucket of water up so we could take a shower. You know, we washed with it. You used dish soap, and it, sure. it worked great. I bet you couldn't use regular soap, bar soap. It ugh, turned. <laughs> yeah, but dish soap worked good and cleaning up and washing your hair and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So anyway, she brought a bucket of five-gallon bucket of water up. She draw it, set it down on her toe hard. And it took a toenail off. Uh. And then it started getting infected. Uh. And then we had a storm, and I blew out my mane. <laughs> no, <laughs> all in San Diego. Yeah, no, this is going, going. Oh, going there. Yeah, it was only Ooh. about four days out, five days out. Oh no! And I had all the time I'd been sailing, I never had to turn around once. And I had two reasons to turn around. Yeah. Once she did that, she she got dehydrated. She got seasick. She got dehydrated. And I mean, I had to give her an enema to make to keep her alive. Jeez. I mean, she was really in bad shape. So anyway, I turned around, went back to Hawaii, and I just took that as an omen. I wasn't supposed to leave. Really? So okay. I stayed there in Hawaii. <laughs> what? How did you get back with the mast damage? Oh, not the mast, just the mainsail. Oh, the mainsail. Yeah. yeah. How'd you do that? Well, we still had the jib and uh, oh, okay. the Jenny, and and I had another storm what they call a storm sail, you know, a main sail, just a little one. And uh, we used that. Wow. So it, we, you know, you pull it down, you put reefing points in it and made it into a little small sail and used that to get back. Wow. But she was in bad shape when we got back, but she was still alive. That's good. Yeah, she was not very happy when I first started giving her the animus. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Understandable, understandable. But, you know, you put sugar water in it and put sugar in water and whatnot, and, you know, heat it up and dissolve the sugar, and it kept her alive, you know. She I mean, that's... She absorbed the, the, the sugar the, uh, for her energy and, and the moisture, because you give her water and she'd drink it, and it'd be right back up in less wow. than 10 minutes. I mean, really? She keep nothing down. Jeez. She got so dehydrated, I was really worried about her. But she made it. Made it. All's well that ends well. Yeah. <laughs> so you stayed in Hawaii. Yep. What did you think of Hawaii? Did you like it? I liked it, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I was there, what, 
I don't know how long I've lived there. That'd have been a while. Yeah, it was there about maybe 10 years, I guess. That's a long time. I don't know. I, I get confused now. It's. I mean, when you've done as many things as you have, it's hard to keep track. Well, that and I'm, I've, I'm, I got CRS. No. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. CRS, can't yep. remember shit. There it is, yeah. <laughs> Why do I have that already? I'm only 28. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I haven't done a fraction of what you've done. Oh my God. So, okay, so you're in Hawaii. I know you did jewelry in Hawaii. Yep. What else did you do? Oh, is that like your thing? Did you have a jewelry shop? Like a jewel? No, no, I worked for somebody else. Oh, okay, cool. But I had I had to set up on my on my second boat that I could do jewelry actually on the boat. Oh, that's cool. I could make it, you know, sheet and wire. Sure. Silver and do go repair work and stuff like that. Set stones. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of that with uh, even well, actually on my first boat too. I did repair work. Smart. And I had some stuff that I had made up and took with me, and I, I sold it and fixed people's jewelry up. That's how I made my money. I mean, the thing is, people think you need so much money. Once the boat, I mean, my boat was paid for. You had to have it paid before you could leave the country. With right. It. But, you know. When we were sailing, for the most part, we didn't spend a whole lot of money. I bet. I mean... It was just food. You didn't have to eat. We ate a lot of fish and rice, popcorn. Mm-hmm. And uh, I did a lot of work on other people's boats. I scraped bottoms all the time to make money. And I, I did a little jewelry work and repair work and, mm-hmm. and um, fixed toilets. And she put fixed the riggings and all kinds of things like that, you know. Sure. And I worked on a little... They have a little seagull engine that's simple as heck and but they're very finicky you know they don't start lots of times and you have ah. to tinker with them i got so i was pretty good at fixing people's outboard for their dinghies and stuff like that there you go but i mean i made made money along the way i mean it, i made money in american Samoa picking up crown of thorns starfish off the reefs Oh. The game department paid us doing that, diving. Nice. And we was diving, doing it, you know. And sure, it's a win-win. Yeah. Just do so, whatever you get to keep going. Yeah, and I, I did some salvage diving in Fiji. That paid pretty well. And That's cool. You know. It was always, always, you know, there's some way to make money if you don't, if you're not, you know, stick your nose up every Yeah, everything, if you don't, you know? not too proud to do yeah. it, there's work out there. Yeah. That makes sense. And it, like you said, you don't need a whole lot to no. just keep on going. Yeah. It's not bad. Not bad. But um, I had a great time. I liked the, I liked the life. Yeah? In mm-hmm. Hawaii? Yeah. Or just in general? In general. Yeah. Yeah. I've always liked my life. I, that's I, good. That's my biggest problem is whenever I had a business and just started getting it going good, I'd always sell it or get, yeah. get out of it <laughs> yeah. and try something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know that in my yeah, whole life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're in Naples, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you did this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're you're in Hawaii. I know you. What did you do for the university there? You did something. Oh, I taught jewelry making. That's what it was. Yeah. How how did you even get into that? Because you didn't. Did you graduate high school? Huh? Did you graduate high school? No. Yeah, you taught at a university. Well, I got my GED. Okay, okay. So that counts. Yeah, I did that when I was in the service. Okay. But um, so you taught jewelry making, which is something that you got from your grandpa but finessed yourself well yeah the jewelry of my grandfather was mostly just cutting stones and polishing them, you know tumble polishing them and and then gluing bezel you know these you know and the stuff sold for like dollar two dollars you know right little stuff little stuff like that but you know he saw he did a lot of it and but I got into the you know actual making of rings and charms and bracelets and all kinds of stuff like that with silver, mm-hmm. using sheet silver, you know, sheet wire and go, uh, sheet wire and uh, sheet and wire. Yeah, yeah so sheet and wire. We got it. Sterling. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. <laughs> yeah. Take a breath. We got this. <laughs> but um, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. CRS just. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> brain fart. Yeah. <part. laughs> <laughs> Hawaii, you taught jewelry making at the university. Yeah, how I got that job was, oh, I know. You won it in a bet. That was something else. I don't know, someone told me about it, I think, and I went up and talked with them, and and, uh, 
They said they had somebody else that they were gonna, they were had wor was working something out with them, and then the, one of the ones that did the hiring came down to my shop. I had a jewelry store there. Oh. Well, I had a jewelry store in downtown Honolulu. Had a wholesale manufacturing company. That's different. In the in the jewelry, you know, small. Sure. You know, small scale, but. But anyway, come down and looked at my stuff and really liked it. Went back and pushed me and got me got 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 me in there. How'd you like that? I liked it. Yeah. I'd have done that if they wouldn't even paid me. Really? Oh yeah, man. The people I met doing that was so fun. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I guess at the at the end of the class, I got so many different funny T-shirts and cards. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. Um, well, that's as cool. a matter of fact, when they get done, you know, after each class, they have to rate the teacher. I was one of the highest, had one of the highest ratings. I can see that. <laughs> you know, because it, it was fun. Yeah, you just had a good time. Yeah. That's cool. But they give me all kinds of T-shirts and things like this with funny things on them, you know. Sure. <laughs> How long did you do that? Uh, I don't know, three years, I guess. Okay. Three years. Yeah, that's That's when I moved back to the... I sold everything and moved back to, uh, where did I move to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's when I came to North Carolina. Is it? You went <laughs> yeah. from Hawaii to North Carolina? Well, actually from Hawaii, I shipped my car over and we drove around the countryside for a while. Okay. Ended up in North Carolina. Really? I wanted to raise emus and ostriches at that time. Really? Yeah. Okay, because I got questions. That, that's why I, when I was in North Carolina looking for a farm to do that. So what? Why? What made you want to leave Hawaii to go back to the mainland? My ex. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then North Carolina, just cause. Well, you know? it was. Because your family's in New Hampshire. Yeah, I know, but it's too cold up there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's fair. <laughs> because that was, North Carolina was a, a median, you know. Uh, in between, you know, and it wasn't too hot and wasn't too cold and okay. whatnot. Sure. And for what I wanted to do, and I didn't want, didn't want too hot. So I, I settled there. Okay. Okay. And, uh, Emus and ostriches. Yeah. Why? Why? Just cause. I, just yeah. I love just, it. That's like the theme of your life. Just cause. Yeah, just wing it. Just, I don't know. You know, and you know, not just emus and ostriches, but I mean, I had. All kinds of oh, I remember. Kind of swans <laughs> I remember swans. I remember emus, ostriches. Our neighbors had those horses. Yeah. We had a pony. Well, no, we had horses. We had horses. Yeah. Okay, I remember horses. Yeah, more horses. I remember blue and silver. Yeah, were their names. I remember them. Yeah, them. Two of them were were boarders. I I had. What does that boarding. mean? Well, people, other people owned them, but they kept them there because they didn't ah. keep them. Okay, I remember that. I remember Oreo. Yeah. I remember the peacocks. Yeah. I remember uh, baby feeding or bottle feeding a baby deer. Yeah, I deer. Uh, chickens. Yeah. I remember there were blackberries along the fence yeah. in the back. You know, things. We had the African crown cranes. You remember them? Cranes, yep. Yep. We had a lot kind of things. blue with a pink and big. Yeah. Blue. And then BR. Yeah, BR. We had an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how does one go about. Like what? What was the point? That's something I've never asked you before. Why didn't we have emus and rias? Like, what did they do that made them like viable? Because you didn't. We. I mean, we did eat them. We ate them. We ate them. Yeah. But did you sell them as meat or just the eggs? Like, or well, just I wanted sold to have baby them? Baby chicks. Okay. I got sold it. Sold the chicks. Got it. Okay. Because I, I feel like because we had a lot. Yeah. It's like fifty. We had there a was bunch a, of them. It was a lot. We One ostrich. Them. Yeah, we just won. Well, I had four of them. And Did you? Yeah, I lost three of them. Okay. But BR stuck around. Yeah. So what is the difference between an emu and a rhea? Rhea is the next size smaller. Okay. it's like Remember a, the, the little gray uh, ones the, that I had? Yeah, I, I remember them being white. Well, I had white ones too, the okay. white ones and gray ones. They, okay. I had both kinds. Is it a different species than an emu? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's a, like calling an emu an ostrich the same. Oh, you know, okay. Got it. Like the... The rheas r are a lot smaller than the the emu. Gotcha. See, I remember them being massive because obviously I was very tiny. Oh yeah. Huh. And then I remember an apple tree in the front. Yep. And getting sick off of those. Yep. And uh, I had a Japanese pear tree that I planted, and we yep. were getting pears off that too. Yep. 
And yeah. then we got into tulips. Remember that? I remember tulips. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you just. <laughs> we, had, uh, we planted I don't know how many thousand bulbs there one year. I remember that. Yeah. You know, because I dug the trench and your mother and I put the tulips in, and you, you and your brother combined filled them in. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. There's so I love that like we um, got pictures of it. Almost almost everything that like there's really no reason why you just did yeah. it to do it. Well, I, I got a whole bunch of bulbs cheap, so yeah, you just why not? I had a... Yeah, <laughs> I ask you why, you answer why not, <laughs> <laughs> which I've actually totally adopted in my life. That's how I operate now, yeah. where I'm always just like, eh, why not? Just go for it for the story. But you know, it's just I like flowers, so yeah, why not? Why not? Had the room for him. I I also love that you're like a big biker dude, but you like flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like plants. I guess. Yeah, why not? Why not? See, why not? That's that's yeah. how it goes. But, so, uh, birds have always been my. I've always yeah. Been bird, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. the attack parrot Jojo. Yeah, yeah, I had parrots and macaws, and I had um, all kinds of pheasants. I remember the pheasants. Yep. I uh, had, I don't know, maybe 15 different kinds of pheasants and about seven different kinds of swans. And Christ, I don't know how many different kinds of geese I had. Lots of them. What's your favorite bird? Oh, that's hard. I know. That's what I do. Uh, I don't know. I, that My first emu was was one of my favorite birds because it, I got her by herself. She, she lost her mate, and I bought it off this woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it took up real good with me. I mean, it was friendly, and it just followed me everywhere I went. I'd be working underneath a vehicle or something. She'd have her head down there, really, and, and <laughs> grabbing my tools. Yeah. <laughs> and they could always tell where I was because she was always right there. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Wherever you saw that emu, I was real close at hand. That's cool. But, I don't know. I've had some parrots that I liked. Uh, I had a macaw that I liked real well. Yeah. She used to ride on my motorcycle all the time with me. Really? Yeah. I'd put carpeting over the gas tank, and when I go down the freeway, she'd step down off the handlebars and get down on that carpet and hang on, put a wheel, her wings out and down, and boy, we'd just go down really? the freeway with them like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been fun to see. Yeah. Got a lot of lot, lot of. Stuff strange looks i bet <laughs> is that a bird <laughs> but when i was going slow she'd get up on the handlebars yeah yeah and she'd sit there that's cool but, uh, what's your favorite animal you've owned because you've owned a lot of very unique bear. bears yeah bears yeah that's one of my favorite yeah how did how do you get bears well this was at the at that that park i was telling you about and there, there was four of them a black one and three brown bears Okay. And the three brown bears, the ones, they were about, I don't know, maybe four or five months when I started getting up with them. And then, but I used to go in there with them and wrestle with them and play with them and take them ice cream and soda, anything sweet they loved. Yeah. You know? And um, it got to the point where, you know, they were just. Like we were just all kids, and I'd go in there, especially after I cleaned them all out. You know, the, I had these big corn cribs on cement, cement foundations, mm -hmm. and then I had a little, a, a little passage into a uh, septic tank, a huge septic oh, tank. Oh, all right. And that's what they used for a den. But anyway, when I go in there and clean out that big corn crib thing, I take a whole bale of uh, shavings in there and just clip the wire off and take the wood off it, and. I'd kick it at them, and they'd come over and bat it, and we'd get rustling, and, I mean, we just played around in there for hours sometimes, just playing around. I'd lay on them, and, and, and they'd play pig pile. just bears. Yeah, they <laughs> played pig, pig pile almost with me and, you know, different things. I mean, I, I liked them. I mean, they were probably out of all my animals. I liked them the best of anything I've ever had. Yeah? Yeah. How long did you have them? Well, I, I had them that year and then I got sold out and left. Where, where was this? This was in Arizona? New Hampshire. In New Hampshire? Oh, yeah. like right the out last, the... That was the last year I was in New Hampshire. When I got wow, so you were stuff. really young yeah. when that happened. Yeah. 
Huh. So that farm with the wild animals, the when you were trying your hand at the dairy things during no, the no, chicken this stuff. This is separate. This was separate. Uh, no, I mean around that time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Three bears. Yeah. So did you, I'm interested in the thought process behind you have three bears. You're like I'm going in there and I'm just gonna start pushing them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they happen to play back. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you know. When when they were smaller, I'd bring one in the house at a time, even you know. And you bring it in the with, house, huh? You just had a bear in your house, just hanging out. Yeah. All right. I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know they were small, and one at a time, they weren't too bad in the house. Sure. You know, I, I they didn't see in all night. I just bring them in for a while and hang out and, and hang out. Yeah, sort of hang out and pat them, and they got. They almost fr- got friendly, just like a dog. They'd always want my attention, you know. And sure. House, they'd come over and want to get in my lap and different things like that, you know. And, of course, they were still 100 and 120 <laughs> pounds, yeah. you know, and <laughs> trying to climb up into my lap. Sure, <laughs> sure. But, uh, no, I, I just... You just connected with them. I connected with them a lot, you know. That's cool. That must have been rough to sell then. Oh, yeah. It was rough to get rid of all that stuff, get out of there. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, my daughter liked the uh, Bengal tiger the best. Though. Right, uh, that was her favorite. She still, you know, tigers are just up her alley. Yeah, of course, of course. But she she fell in love with the tiger. How hard was that working with a tiger? Because they're not known to be well nice. <laughs> uh, no, I had his pen was divided into two sections with a walkway go from one to the other with a door in the middle of that so like whenever he's on one side i'd close it down close that door and i'd go in clean the other clean his cage out mm-hmm. get it all ready for him and then i'd open the door and i had put food in there, and he'd go in there and I'd close the door again clean the other half out sure you definitely I, weren't wrestling with that one no i didn't trust him like <laughs> when i was in there with him a couple few times i was in there with him as long as i faced him i was all right really but like um, when I was out cleaning in front of his cage, as long as I faced him, it was all right too. But I turned my back around every once in a while, just turn around, and man, he'd leap right at me. Really? <laughs> yeah, right to the cage. You know? yeah. Well, cats are predators. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. But as long as I was facing him, he'd he'd kind of lay back and snarl a little bit, and not, you know, I wasn't too worried. Sure. But I, I I'd never be in his cage and turn my back on him. That's for sure. That's fair. Probably smart. That was, you know. What was what was the most difficult animal to raise? Uh, probably work wise or both. Well, work wise or otherwise. The sea lions I had, they were. You had sea you lions? Know, yeah, at five. What? <laughs> uh, you know, but they had a big pool without filters. You know, so sure. I had to keep changing the water all the time. That makes sense. You know, I had to pump out this pool and then fill it back up. Mm-hmm. And I had to dig a big hole for the water to go into because mm-hmm. I couldn't, you know, let it go out all over because it was pretty smelly. I bet. Because of all the fish they ate. Right. But I had an elk. He was beautiful and had a, a real nice rack on him. When he was in velvet, he was all right, but when... When he come out of velvet, the that's horn, when the horns are all fuzzy. Yeah, he was all right because they, they bleed if they hit him, hit him hard, you know. Really? Yeah. It's so, like a dog's toenail. There's like meat inside of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're growing. They got that velvet underneath. That velvet's all bloody and oh. stuff like that. And then when the velvet dries up and the, all that stuff, then they get itchy and they scratch them all the time. Well, the elk would hook onto that chain link fence and pull posts and everything went up out of the ground. Oh no. So I used to dope him up a little bit, and I'd go in and t- throw a rope around him. <laughs> oh, no. And then I'd run around circles around him, made the circle smaller and smaller, and finally had to push him over. Sure, <laughs> get him busy. cut his horns off. And after cutting his hand horns off, though, he would, you, you could tell he was devastated. I mean, it was a, I felt bad for him afterward because sure. he, he, he put his head in the... In the barn, and he had hardly ever come up before. You'd stand Aww. out there with that rack up there, sticking up there. He had a big rack. Poor guy. Yeah, but I mean, he he would. He'd hook on the chain link fence, pull post, and everything. I mean, I had them posts 
metal post cemented right into the ground. And he just He'd pull it right on. up and tear the fencing oh. off the post. If the, if the post didn't come up, then the chain link come off the, you know. Just Goodness. He had so much power in them things. They're strong animals. What's the what's the worst injury you've had from an animal? I got gored by a deer one time. Uh hit my le- the artery of my leg and blood was going pumping out. Oh no. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> the guy that was working for me at the time, I didn't realize it at first. Really? Yeah. I'm not surprised. And the guy told me he says you better better do something you're bleeding bad and then I looked down there's this whole blood just squirting out. Yeah, squirting all over the place. <laughs> So I threw him, threw him down, went in the house and gave myself a shot of penicillin and put pressure on it, got it stopped bleeding, put one little stitch in it, and then I went out there and I got a garbage can cover and I went to went after him again. And when he charged me, I was expecting it. I wasn't expecting it before. He was a pet. I raised him from, from small, sure. just a little fawn, but he, he was during breeding season and uh, just aggressive you know he got real aggressive sure and so when he came after me the second time i grabbed his horns threw him down cut his horns off oh well <laughs> that'll do it and then he didn't charge me anymore <laughs> that's fair that's fair jeez but that was about i got bit one time by the green java monkeys in my belly too one time. uh the two monkeys were fighting and one got his hand tore up pretty bad Ooh. He was clinging on the side of the cage, and I, w- I had doped him some, but I didn't probably wait long enough. I went in, in the cage, and I grabbed him. When I went to grab him, he spun around and bit me right in my belly. Uh, you're like, I'm trying to help your hand, and he was not having <laughs> <Yeah>. it. Ooh. Now <coughs> uh, well, you got kicked in the mouth by an emu. That's, oh, that's, yeah, knocked my teeth out. Yeah. You remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Knocked my teeth out right out through the side of my cheek. Yeah, that'll do it. Drank my coffee. I had to put my finger in the hole in my cheek <laughs> to keep the coffee from coming out. <laughs> you kids used to get a kick out of that. Yeah. I'd take a drink and blow it out through the... <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, in hindsight, that's so gross. <laughs> I, You know what else I remember? I have, like, random memories. One was, like, our allowance. You know, we got, like, a dollar and yeah. quarters, and you had this, like, piece of paper that had an emu on it. And you had, like, the quarters in its mouth, and if we misbehaved, you'd take a quarter <laughs> off. And we're like, no! <laughs> <laughs> Just random, random things like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So what? I mean, you've done quite a few things. Which is, I, I've said, I've told you this. Like, I, I started the show because I grew up hearing these kind of stories, and I was like, I want to this. And I like people, too, in the same way like you. Yeah. I'm kind of I, – I don't think you can deny me in court anymore, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what's something that, like, you've learned in life so far, like a good lesson that you would want people to get? I know, right? People, I think made, made, uh, one big thing, I think, I've seen so much greed around. Yeah. You know? It's true. And I've seen so many poor people, but, man, they were so happy, happier than a lot of rich people I've met. I bet. Know? These, they, uh, and the thing is, I find that the poorer the people, the more they're willing to share what they do have with you too. I you think know, so too. I, uh, I noticed that a lot. I mean, you know, everywhere I went, it seemed like you know they'd bring fresh fruit out to me and stuff like that. I'd take them out fishing and stuff like that too. I'd, I'd go out and catch a tuna every once in a while and bring it in, cut it all up, and I mean. They just appreciated little things like that so much. Sure. It was amazing, you know. And um, I don't know. Uh, like, a lot of them little islands, they, they don't know what ice is or uh, sure. know, ice cream, electric, or any car. Any luxury, or, yeah. You know, I've been into a lot of places like that. And then people were, were, were so happy, you know. It was mm-hmm. it's amazing. I mean, uh, some of the customs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> At Christmas Island one time, I pulled in there and I got inside the lagoon. It was pretty shallow getting across into the lagoon, but I hit a few times, but I got in there and it was deep. Mm-hmm. And there was this girl in there. That she didn't speak no English. Mm-hmm. 
But she'd sit there on the beach and just look out at the boat all the time. And then when I come in, she'd follow me all around the little town that they had. It wasn't much of a town. They only had one little trade store. That that was it. Sure. Uh, but she'd follow me everywhere. I mean, I, I say little girl. She was, I don't know, probably 18, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But in a way, she followed me everywhere I went, about three paces behind me. <laughs> And one day, your brother come up to talk to me. He he could speak pretty pretty decent English, mm -hmm. and he told me that you know his sister liked me and all this stuff. I said, well, I said you know she never talks to me. She don't she don't speak English, and I don't speak Gilbertese. You know. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, anyway, he told me she, she wanted me to come see her. I said, well, come see her. I said, what do you mean? He says you pick up about three pebbles three or four pebbles and you throw them at the window and she'll come out tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I go in there, I'm throwing pebbles at the window and she comes out and grabs me by the hand. We go out into this, uh, like a field was all palm trees out there, coconut trees mm -hmm. with tall grass in it. Sure. And we're walking out through there and I think half the town's out there in this, in this really? tall grass. It's <laughs> like, you see no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> It's just a designated area. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody, you know, religion is, is funny down there. Everybody's so religious, but yet, you know, the things that they do do is... Sure. <laughs> it's for the field. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, it's funny, you know, you're walking along, all of a sudden you got to step over somebody. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so did you, like... What do you think it is that keeps you, like, you just do things? Like, you know, I don't, it's not that you don't think things through, but you also just kind of wing it. Like, what do you think it is about winging it that, what's the key to winging it? <laughs> it's more fun. It's more adventurous. Yeah. You do do the, you do go off the beaten path. That but is the I, way to go. I, I like, I like going off the beaten path. I like traveling. Well, you know that. Yeah, same. All yeah, you've infected me with that. Thanks. All, all the places we've been. Yeah. You know, but. I don't know. I, I like to see how other people live. Sure. One thing. And, uh, I mean, I've met some really, really nice people in my travels. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've learned a lot from them that how happy they they are even though they don't have everything, you know. Sure. they got everything they need. Sure. And, and they're happy for what they do have, you know. Sure. And, you know, it... I find in this country and a lot of other places, you know, people aren't happy unless they're making more money than their neighbor, you know? Right. You know, it's always... It becomes a, a thing against somebody yeah, else, it, comparing it, yourself to other it, people. And it's not, not... They don't need it. Sure. But yet, you know, they want more and more and more. Sure. I find, I find that part of life... You know, down very down beating. You know. Sure. It's, it's, <laughs> so you want to go people, everywhere that people isn't. People don't need it, and that th that money could go to a lot more good. You know. Sure. A lot of places I went to, you know, didn't have good drinking water even. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they caught water and and off the roof and stuff like that. And sure. You know, all kinds of things they did to get water. You know, and I mean, the simple thing is good water. I mean, you know, like. A lot of places I went at the, um, oh, hell, them people, uh, U.S. puts out them kids, oh, come on, help me out here. Where at? Well, they're all, uh, you sign up for it and travel. Oh, uh, Peace Corps. Yeah, there you go, Peace Corps. I got you. Uh, Places that have been where Peace Corps has been in there, and, and they put wells in for these villages and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, they're so thankful for that. Yeah. They're drinking good water, not coming out of a river that's, you know, who knows what's been in there and right. what's been done in there and, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it don't take a lot to make a lot of these people happy, you know. That's sure. A, that's, I think, in my travels, that's... I'm humbled by it, you know. Sure. You know, I, I I don't have a lot, but I have so much more than they have yet. But, right. You know. Gives you perspective. And, and they're just as happy as 
as can be, you know? Sure. And I think more people ought to ought to travel and do and be, live with these people and see how you know. Sure. If it it, it it's just a hard thing to explain, I guess. I yeah. No, I. I think you're right, though. You know, greed in this country has gotten just way out of hand. Yeah. You it know, gets it's, and it's such a bubble too yeah. that like I I tell everybody that like traveling's good for you because it it opens your perspective and yep. lets you look at things from other people's point of view. Yeah. So you you get this idea and references and like you've seen what it's like to not have and still be content. Yeah. So it's like how do you come back from that and not show at least gratitude for what you have as opposed to yep. greed for something you don't. Yeah. Yeah. But uh you know I don't know why people feel they have to have so much money. I don't know. That's 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 is mind boggling to me. That's all. I don't know. It's a hole. It's a hole in the soul that yeah. they're just not trying to fill. And I and I can't believe they're they're any happier than a lot of these people that don't have nothing, you know. It's true. A lot of them I mean, aren't. The thing is there's a lot of people that don't have nothing but they do need more, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You know they, Absolutely. they they barely can live from day to day now that's that part's not good now in the in the pacific and places have been like that uh they got everything they need they can fish there's plenty of fish there's plenty of things that they can grow you know land, right land's good down there and so you know there's basically not too much that they really need right you know um like in in, in the Canavo group in fiji when i was down there the older people are taken care of by the young people. I mean, there's a village has the the chief owns all the land on the, the, all mm-hmm. the land, and when you get to a certain age, you get you get assigned a piece of land. Sure. And then when your parents get to a certain age, the chief says, "Hey, you give them so many fish and so many bananas, or else you lose your land." You know? Sure. And so uh, you know the older people are all taken care of like that. that you know, when they get to the point where they can't take care of themselves. Sure. You don't see, <coughs> excuse me, you don't see these people that, you know. Are just amassing. People that are abandoned or, you know, things sure. like that. You know, the chief says, you do this and you better do it or you're going to lose <laughs> yeah. your land. You know, that's all there is to it. Right. It's everyone and, helping each other out. And And the chief owns all the cattle and all the hogs. Sure. I mean, everybody's raising them, but I mean, they all belong to the chief. And he says when they slaughter, you know, right. when one's slaughtered, everybody comes around, gets a piece of it, you know. It's not, you don't have to buy it, you just come there and, you know, you, you, sure. get, your, you get your piece, you know. And Different way of life. Yeah. I think that's also less about like, we're here, we're kind of obsessed with ownership. You know, it's all about having as opposed yeah. to collectively having or something like that is. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And traveling really, really opens you up to that kind of thing of like, it doesn't have to be self-serving yeah. all the time. Like, on the, down there in the Kandava group, some people there, if they see 20, 20, when I was there, and I'm not saying it's that way now. Sure. When I was there, if they saw 25, $20, $25 cash a year, that was, that, that was pretty wealthy. Sure. You know, and they got that from selling uh, Coper and you know coconut and things like that, and also the kava, kava root. They sold a lot of kava root, which is a like a drink they make out of. It makes your tongue all numb. Yeah, and does you it? Talk funny. Really? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, you know, uh, very little cash, you know, but yet, you know, they're very happy people. And yeah, it's like you don't need it. And like this one, one family. Uh, once I got to know. Uh, was there for a little bit the, for after the first week and I got uh, in with the chief and the, everybody was super friendly and nice with me mm-hmm. and I got invited to stay at this one one house and I stayed with this family for I don't know probably almost a week mm-hmm. I spent my days visiting the island and diving and fishing and whatnot and spent the night with them and you know I tried to give them some money you know I mm-hmm. give them $10 for staying there the whole week. I mean, they fed me, they did my laundry, they did everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. But they wouldn't even take it. Really? And yet, you know, $25 a year is um, if they crazy. they saw that much, they were lucky. And I offered them 10 and they wouldn't take it. Sure. You know. It's like they didn't need it. Yeah. 
They didn't want it. They want they the friendship was enough, you know. I think that's really important to keep in mind. I hope more people end up being like that. That like that that's the thing I've talked about it a bunch is like I mean this is episode 100. Yeah. So I've done 100 episodes. I've talked to over 100 people and my favorite thing about it is getting to know the people. Yeah. And I think I totally got that from you. Yeah. Because like there are these big time actors and you know all these people that like I'm a fan of their work, but my show is about them as a person and getting to know them as people and connecting on that level. Because ultimately, we're all people. Yep. And I think I totally got that from you. So, good job. Well, I'm good. Uh, you kids <laughs> come out good, you know. I mean, there's still time. You know, don't <laughs> <laughs> don't get too much credit yet. I got high hope for yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. Lower them down, Dad, just in case. I Yeah, that's the that's one of the biggest things I got from you. That, definitely the travel thing, mm. you know, to Monique's distress sometimes. <laughs> 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 well, to your mother, I do, too. you know <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that, um, yeah, I don't know. Just I like people too. I think, especially as I've gotten older, I'm definitely a lot more like you, um, for better or worse. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> but it's neat. So, like, what is, what's something that, like, I don't know, what's something I should know about life coming up because I'm still pretty early on. <laughs> Like you just wing it, like that. That's that's pretty good. So just wing it. But like, what do you need to know, as far as like, give me a give me a little wisdom, Dad. <laughs> what do you what do you got for me? Dream big and do it. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm halfway there. <laughs> well, I know you're doing it. I'm you doing know, I'm doing all right. Your dream. You know, out of all the things that I've wanted to do, there's only two things that I haven't done in my life that I've actually wanted to do. I wanted to go to Machu Picchu, which I. It's. I mean, you got time. I know, but uh, in my condition, I don't know if I can climb that much. But it's still the thing, and running before the bulls in Pomona, Spain. That's tense. That's only two things in my life that I've wanted to do and haven't done. Everything, Everything else you else, did. You just did it. I've done. I mean, I've traveled over half this world, and, you know, I've been in all 50 states. I've been in all the states, um, all the territories and Providence and Canada. Been to Central America, South America, you know. And, sure. And all over the Pacific, you know, north and south. Sure. And been to Europe, then did Europe twice, once with you. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you saw all of Ireland in a week and a half. <laughs> all five, all 1,100 miles. Yeah, every of bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was... That's Funny pretty good. Driving all that on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Some of them little narrow roads that we were in. That was fun. Fun trip. Yeah, I agree. I still talk about it. Yeah. I'm going back in two years if you want to yeah. come. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to grow my beard out too. Yeah. That's another thing. Thank God I can grow a beard. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't until like maybe three years ago. Yeah. It was still all patchy and like didn't come in right. And I was like, uh oh, I'm your son. I have to grow a beard. <laughs> so when it finally came in, I was like, oh, all right. I, mean, I can carry this on, yeah. so that kind of worked out. Yeah, when I started, I didn't have, I had two little bare patches right there. Yeah. When was the last time you were clean shaven? <laughs> it's been a while. It's been over 50 years. <laughs> over 50 years? Okay, yeah. good. It's been over 50 years. I mean, I already told you if you ever shaved your beard, I wouldn't talk to you until it came back. <laughs> Nobody would know me. Yeah, on like purpose. My sister's the only one yeah. that, that's seen me without my beard. That's fair. Probably best. That's still alive in a way. Yeah, sure. Oh, man. Well, normally uh, I end these podcasts by being like, where can people find you online? But, well, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> and probably best, you know, just in case. But we made it happen. Yeah. I had to, I had to tie you to a chair and <laughs> emotionally guilt trip you for a couple of years. <laughs> But you did it, Dad. Look at that. Yeah, I did it. You did your you did your first podcast. Yeah. Probably your last. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but it wasn't so bad, right? Uh, not too bad. It was pretty good. Yeah. I told you I'm pretty good at this now. Yeah. You know, and you were all nervous. You didn't even yeah. know. Look at that. Well, I took care of you. Yeah, we so. <laughs> got it. Got just about everything in, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is the this is tip of the iceberg. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so. I think that's it. Say bye to everyone, Dad. Yeah, someday we'll talk about the gold mining in Alaska and things like that. that. You, we didn't even touch on that. You know what? You know this means you have to come back on one day, right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
Maybe 150. Or two, we'll do 200, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. If I'm still here. You better still be here. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing. I'm knocking them out. Yeah. So yeah, I made. I made it to 100. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. You finally came on. Yep. So we did it. We did it. That's right. I love you, bud. I love Son. you, Dad. Son, bud. Son, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, buddy. And buddy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I love you too, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash JediBrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.